What's going on guys? Quasi here, just getting my webcam set up to start the day. We are streaming on this Tuesday afternoon. Getting back to work on some melee attacks in Skyhook. We got the game pulled up right over here. Uh, so let's see, there's a few things we're gonna work on today before we get started, almost like some warm up game code. <clears throat> so the main goal for today is to finish up more melee animations for the characters. Yesterday I worked on the on Finn's melee attack. So you can see for the first time ever in game right now he is chomping and chomping and chomping. What is it called? Chomping at the bit, right? Is that some sort of a saying? I'm, I'm really bad at sayings. But now when you press X playing as Finn, he'll perform a melee attack which makes him chomp and chomp and chomp. If you do this next to an enemy, it will kill them. So there is officially a new way to kill people in Skyhook. You can see here in the sandbox, if I bite them, then I will stun them for a second. So right off the bat, I'm noticing a tiny thing. The controls are getting a little bit crowded down here now that there's four controls rather than three. I'm gonna turn my music down for a sec. Seems a little loud on stream. I need to restart Unity here. There we go. Okay, I see what's going on. It looks like OBS uses the volume from YouTube, not the volume from my headset. Alright. That should be a lot better. Sorry if you guys couldn't hear me. Uh, so right off the bat, we've got to adjust these controls a little bit. So I'm just going to move the titles down by a smitch, not such a smitch, maybe less of a smitch. Let's call it one, or how about zero five? I'm also going to shrink these titles, so let's do point one. Oopsie daisies. So I started working on porting the game over to Unity 5.3 yesterday uh, on a separate branch on my laptop. And thankfully, now that we have the new palette swapping system and the new shader system, everything turned out fine, which is awesome. Except for the fact that all the canvas text is like just up. Like, whereas, like, see right now, like the jump is here. In Unity 5.3, it's like like 30 pixels higher up, which like I don't know what's going on. I tried to adjust like the alignments here. Alright guys, I'm back. That's the biggest downside to a wireless headset, is that every now and again, it will die. Then you have to remember to plug it back in, which I always forget. So yeah, like I was saying, in Unity 5.3, for some reason all of the canvas titles are just shifted up by a little bit, which is really annoying. So I don't know if there's some sort of a universal fix for it, I actually haven't had a chance to look it up yet. Uh, or maybe I just have to go through all the canvas elements in the game and readjust them. <clears throat> so, uh, just adjusting these titles here. Starting to look a little bit more spaced out, which is good. I wouldn't mind them being a little bit smaller. It's always tough to balance between what people can actually see on the screen when they're sitting at a TV as opposed to sitting in front of their computer. A lot of times when people are standing far away from a screen, 
are sitting far away from the TV screen, they can't see any of that text in the bottom. The thing that says hook, melee, jump, etc. Let's try halfway between. 7 5. You can see right now, if Anara just slides across the floor, that's actually her performing her melee attack, which right now she has no animation for. So Finn's the only one that does have a melee animation. So I'm thinking <clears throat> I'll probably start with Jade's today. I think hers will be like a scratch attack. Bruno's will be something like a punch, and Anara will be like a like a dagger swipe. She has a little dagger in her in her satchel. And Grimlock will, of course, just... Whoa! That ain't no Grimlock. The hell happened there? Looks like I overrode Grimlock with Finn by accident. That's just Prime. Let's just jump into Pixelated here. So yesterday I was making some improvements to Finn's animations. It looks like I overrode them as Grimlock's animations instead. Whoopsie daisies. Just go back. That's the good thing about having everything saved in the pixel edit file. Just go back and replace it. And of course, worst case scenario, I would just jump into um, get into revision control and grab one of the older versions of the file. Oh. Let's shift over here. Ah, I did forget to t tweet about this stream. So let's fix this and then we'll do that. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Let's grab a little screenshot. And you can copy images into Twitter now, right? Is that right? Let's tweet that out. Save this image. Thanks for the follow on Twitter. Let's drop all that stuff out. Oh, righty, 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 righty. <clears throat> Alright. See if we fix that problem with Grimlock. He's pink again. Check out all his skins, guys. He's got, I think, one of the best palette swaps in the game. He's got his blue. He's got his yellow raincoat. He's got his dark, evil pink. His inverse skin. He's got his green, weird, this one probably needs some work skin. And then he's got his standard pink. And now with the introduction of Grimlock, all the characters have pink skins. See, Jade looks pretty snippy here in her pink and black outfit. And it's perfect because it'll kind of line up for the next set of holiday skins since Christmas is going to be ending uh, in a few days. Or uh, happening in a few days and then it's over. Uh, now Grimlock skin can double as everybody's Valentine skins. There's Runa's pink. And we've even got a little bit of a pink fin. Which is awesome. He's in love. 
We got our pink Anara. All right, <clears throat> let's jump into a quick match here. We'll do a standard death match. We'll head over to the Skies of Frostguard. Boom. So it's funny because with the addition of the melee attack, you constantly want to do it, and it's both it's it's much easier to kill somebody when they're next to you with the melee attack, but it also makes you super vulnerable. Griffin time. Whoa, I didn't kill her. This is one of the new changes to the game since the last update is that when you fall off a griffin or if you jump off a griffin, it'll stay on screen for as long as it its spawn time is, and then after a while it'll un, it'll dismiss itself. Because I know it was a common problem I was having, or people were having in the game, is that, Hey, Ron Who, what's going on? How's it going? Long time no see. Long time being like three or four days or something. How's everything going? How's the videos? I know you've been making a ton of new uh, videos on YouTube. It's been awesome. I've been checking them out. Check it out, Ron Who. This is what we made on stream yesterday. Uh, Finn now has a new attack. If you press X, he will chomp people, and that will kill them. You're flying in a few hours. Where are you going, around who? Ah, uh, you had to get all your videos ready for the like Christmas holiday. Ah, oh, fell down. Where are you flying off to? France to see your family. That is awesome, dude. That's so cool. Well, when's your... You're flying in a few hours, right? So yeah, have a safe flight for sure. Ah, got a bug here. Got a quick little bugsy wugsy. Let's go over to the game over panel. When I was pressing A as Finn, it wasn't dismissing the bots. You recorded 50 videos in the last few days? That's insane, dude. Wow, that's pretty insane. That's awesome. I'm sure your planet, your um, planet, I'm sure your uh, viewers are going to appreciate it. So, here's what we're going to do. If info is bot, if Input manager dot active device action one was pressed or oops forgot the if here. Basically, what I want to say is that if you're a bot and anyone presses A or B on their controller, whether that's a keyboard or not. Then confirm and slide away. Put, the, put this all on one line. If that and that, then confirm button equals true. What's the problem here? Oh, confirm pressed. Awkward. Yeah, that's so cool that you're flying to France. How long is the flight from where you are? Uh, so I'm hoping this patch will be available as soon as I can finish the animations for all the characters. It is up on the private beta. I put it up yesterday, except I wouldn't recommend you make any videos with it because the other characters are, don't have any animations for their attack. So they'll just slide around on the screen. So my goal is to try to get, finish all the animations before Christmas and then get this update out. Uh, it's probably... Uh, tr me overreaching a little bit, but that is the deadline. It is to finish all the animations by tomorrow and get the update out in time for Christmas, uh, and hopefully just get a a patch up out, a patch out tomorrow night before I leave for the holidays as well. Uh, four to five hours, that's cool. That's not too bad. Get a nice book. Uh, get some videos on your or your tablet or phone or something if you have one. 
I recently started, uh, so I fly a lot because I live here in Buffalo and my family lives in New York City. And it's, it's a very short flight, it's like an hour. But I try to always like take a book with me because otherwise I'd never make the time to read books. I'm always reading something online or watching a YouTube video about something or working on the game. So, uh, so yeah, I like to try to read when I'm on a plane. I like turn off the TVs and all the other stuff on the plane so I can't look at any screens for at least one hour in my life. Because otherwise I'm always looking at some kind of a screen. Yeah, around who hopefully this will be a cool gift for you in the New Year's. I'll, I'll definitely let you know once it's all up and out. Um, hopefully I can get it up before New Year's, but if I can't, or before Christmas. But, I mean, the longer it takes, the better it'll look, I think, anyway. But pretty much all the systems are there. I think all the bugs are fixed with it as well, which we'll find out on stream today. Um, so just got to work on the animations today. So do another test match here. And around here, we also have a brand new character. Well, I think you saw me making him on stream last week. But Grimlock is completely done. He is fully animated. His animations are all polished, and he's ready to be in the game. He just also needs an attack animation right here. jump into another test match. Let's play a little bit of Skyball. Yeah, Ron Hosari, we haven't gotten a chance to play Paladins together. I've been super busy trying to get these uh, melee attacks in. But definitely want get to get back on that game. I didn't get much of a chance to play. Uh, yeah, you should totally be the first to be do a video about it. That would be awesome. Yeah, no other, none of the other Let's Plays on YouTube have been able to cover all this stuff. This, So this update... Oh, I can see a bug already. Those platforms are squeezed in. And the frog's hands are not. Uh, like, There's a whole bunch of stuff coming to this next update. There's the whole new camera system. Uh, where now the camera follows the players around and zooms in and out. Which I think makes the... Uh, fighting a lot more exciting. Uh, I need to move this frog out. Yep. So the problem is that frog was in the same prefab. Oops. Stage 0, 01, 00. zero. Yes, yeah, so I can see the frog is missing. I'll paste that back in there. Let's drop that in there. And go back. So we just need to adjust this frog. Basically, you can see his hands are way out. They're not touching the platform. So we're just going to adjust his hands here. And I don't think it's going to work. Because... Hmm. Oh, I think we have smaller hands, actually. Boodoop. These cute little... Cute little hands. Uh, that's not going to work either. Damn it! Do I need a new hand type? Could have it have broken hands. Hmm. This is quite a pickle. Basically, we want that. All right, we'll just go with that <clears throat> for now. Then I'll have to, oops, make him new hands. What? I lost it all. Let's undo everything. Let's put this in, and same here, and what we'll do is, so we've got that little bit of a messed up shoulder, yeah, it looks so bad. We'll have to make him some new hands. Oh, the giveaway ends in two days, Ron Who? cool, yeah, if you tweet out about it today, I'll be sure to retweet it. So hopefully some people who are following me might be interested in getting the game. If anyone's hanging out on stream, 
Ronho is doing a giveaway for this game. He's got some Steam keys, so definitely check that out. If you guys want to get some Skyball action, some Grappling Hook action, some Chomping Fin action, Ronho's got you covered there. Oh shit! Nice recovery, I must say so myself. Here we go, just testing out the camera here. Pretty decent. I think some there's a few times where it gets a little finicky. Chomp. Uh, sometimes it'll get stuck uh, when characters get too close to each other and they're near a goal. So that's some stuff we could work on as I see more gameplay of it. One of the new things I added is these foreground leaves to frog. So if you're clever enough, you could hide behind them. Just add a little bit more of a little bit more depth to the stage, and hopefully animate them sometime soon as well. And then the stage will really come to life, I think. Jump back into another test match. We'll use Grimlock this time. Test out the new character. We will do a Steam Tank match. That's when you have three hook ammo and they only recharge when you're on the ground. Ah! Nara with the melee attack. So that's the crazy thing about Steam Tank now, is that even if you don't have any hook ammo, you won't be able to swing, but you can still kill people from close up because now you have your melee attack. See the computer stuck there, there on a corner. Still a bug I'm trying to work out with them. You can see the camera zoomed in all the way on Grimlock, which is awesome. You get to really appreciate his animations. Oh, out of ammo. I'm out of there. Out of ammo again, I'm out of there. I do wonder if that X should be the color, their color, or if it should just be red. Not 100% sure yet. What's also cool is your melee attack can also serve as a, a little bit of a dash forward in the air. So you can jump, you can then dash to, or dodge to get a double jump. And then you can use your melee attack to get even further, kind of smash style. Oh, nice kill there, computer. At least I got first blood. Not a failure, mom. So, this game is Skyhook. If you guys know about it, it is a game where you fight with grappling hooks out on Steam Early Access. The melee is cool, awesome, Ron, who I'm glad. Yeah, I was really nervous about adding it in. It's one of the biggest changes to the game in the last two years. But I do think it's kind of filling a small hole in the game that was always there. Which is like it gives you a little bit more to do, a little bit more strategy. And it's just fun to watch Finn try to eat all the characters. There he goes. Just ate me. Bit me to death. The music we're actually listening to on stream today, guys, is by Julian Shanahan, the composer behind Skyhook. He made all the music for the background, uh, the, all the background music for all the stages, the theme song, the trailer song, all the characters' theme songs that plays when they win. That guy is freaking awesome. Definitely check him out. He's on YouTube. That's Julian Shanahan. Yeah, it's so creepy when Grimlock's claw comes out. Because it's like his arm. He's just flailing it around. Well, I am losing. That's not cool. There's another bug with the computer there. Oh, you subscribe, Ron? Who? That's awesome. Yeah, his music is so good. Ugh. Oh, so that little white flash there, guys. That's some pixel 
grid issues, but I think that might only be because I'm on my Cintiq, which has a weird resolution. Wow, got chomped to death there. All right, so that's melee, guys. Let's get to work on some. Ah, that's still, that bug is still happening. So the computers, hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. So let's see what we did here. If listen for player and player. Is that really happening in update? That's crazy. If is bot, confirm button, press. Why don't we just, um, hmm, what if we did an else, no, I think what I really need to do is when a player confirms to confirm all of the bots, right? Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to. There's a game over controller panel. Or, yeah. Let's see. Uh, the game over controller panel, that's what sets up all the players. Here it is. So, what we'll do is we'll keep a running list. Ah, there's the giveaway link. Cool, Ron, who you put it on Twitter. Let me hop over there. And I will retweet you right now. Oh, I got so many notifications. There it is. Retweet. Yes. Thanks for doing that giveaway, Ron, who that is awesome. Really appreciate it. Uh, so what we're going to do here is... We got a generic thing already, so we're going to make a list, I'll put it over here. We're going to make a list of all the game over panels that are, that belong to bots. Right, and we're going to store reference to all the bot panels when we create them. So, if uh, GOP.player... Did somebody say fish? Hey, Anthony! Thanks for the follow, man. Welcome to the crew. You're officially a sky pirate. Thanks for hanging out, dude. We are working on melee attacks for all the characters, uh, which are going to kind of replace the swords in the game. Essentially, it's the same thing, except that they're, they're going to have different animations instead of using a sword. Uh, if game over player and the game over player is bot then so if game over player and the over player is a bot then we're going to add it to the bot list so bot panels dot add this panel right yep 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 cool so now we'll always have a list of all of the bots in the game over controller so see if this is a singleton it is not Hmm. All right, so we're going to give the bot a reference to the game over panel controller, which I don't think it has yet. Call this the panel controller. Yep, it does not have it. Make that public so we can set it. And when we create the panel, we'll just say geopanel.controller equals this. All right, Ranhu, no worries. Got a pack for your flight and stuff, I'm sure. So we got all that. This is an empty method. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, <clears throat> so what we'll do is whenever someone confirms, so we'll go to confirm pressed. So I'm going to get rid of all these references to bots. I'm going to delete that, delete that. Going to delete that. 
right? So what we'll do is on confirm. So we'll do if controller, then we'll call panel controller dot uh, confirm all bots. Basically, if once somebody confirms, then the game over panel controller will go through all of the bot panels and confirm them as well. So if ready to go, right? Just make sure we check that we can't just call this whenever we want. If confirmed and not ready to go. So if ready to go, return. If not ready to go, return. We're going to change this to has confirmed. It's much easier to understand. So if we already confirmed, don't do anything. If we haven't confirmed, then don't cancel. Um, so for each, first we'll check the bot panels. If panels bot panels dot count equals zero, then return because we don't need to do it if we don't have any bots in the match. Otherwise, for each panel in bot panels, we're going to run through them and we're going to confirm them. Let's make that a public method. this public method as well and there we go so basically as soon as somebody confirms it will run through and confirm all of the bots let's take a look if that works or not in game let's compile our scripts here we head back to the main menu Actually, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, BGS guys, how long do you guys usually hang out at the space? Um, like, how long do you guys usually co-work for at the space? Is it till, like, I know, Foot, you always say that it's, um, you know, until the last person leaves, but, like, generally, do you guys stay there till, like, five, six, seven? Let's test out these changes to the Game Over panel. I've got some interesting issues here where I see that when the camera zooms in, it doesn't move around as much. I need to, I think I need to scale how much it can move, like it's X and min, min X and min, or it's like maximum and minimum values for X and Y based on how much it's zoomed. Not really sure about the math behind that right now. Wow, these computers are just diving into the lava. No remorse, these guys. Which 10 to 7 guaranteed mileage varies after that, depending on who's around and what's going on. Cool, good to know. Yeah, you know, because I've been streaming a lot, I, you know, I still want to hang out at the space for co working, but since I've been streaming on Twitch more, I'm trying to figure out how I can balance those two. Maybe I could come over after streaming and hang out for an hour, a few hours or so. So you usually leave there at 7 every day? You were there till 9? Dude, that's crazy. Okay, so now nothing works. None of the panels work in the game. That's that's great. It's exactly what we were going for. I could stream there. Isn't that going to be annoying? I imagine people are going to be like, yo, why is that guy shouting and yelling about pirates all the time and constantly saying welcome to the crew? Although I bet your, your internet connection is probably way better than mine. Um... Where was okay, so now confirming isn't working at all for the panels. So let's look at that. If listen for player and player. C 
current controller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be talking a lot if I'm streaming for sure. The bo oh yeah, there is the boots in the office room. Right, right, yeah, I totally forgot about that. How's the audio uh, room coming? I saw last time I was there, there was a sign that said like, under construction or work in progress or something like that. Are you guys actually uh, pushing forward to that on that? So if keyboard, then that. Otherwise, than that. Well, I broke everything, so this is great. Oh, it's because I probably it's because I added these. Um. Uh, it's because has confirmed never gets set to true. It looks like <clears throat> it's done here on the slide. Oh, I see. So where does has confirmed get initialized? It's there. It's false. Is it really used outside? I see. So we're going to start this off as false. And this time we're just going to test it out in a scene. Still need the vent boxes, soundproofing stuff. That's cool. Dude, I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be so crazy when we start doing some voice recording and music mixing. And I'm sure the music meetup guys are going to love that thing. Oh, I think I crashed my Unity. I'm here, Unity. What's going on? <clears throat> All right, let's jump back to Unity here. Looks like we crashed it doing something. I think it's I left the game running while I was editing the code. All right. Go into a stage. Let's get a quick match in. Or I think the bot should be dead so we can just kill them all. Now we're gonna test out some biting. Chomp, 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 chomp. For anyone who has seen the game before, uh, we're working on melee attacks for the different characters. We'll be starting off the stream today with Jade. Uh, Ron, who asked, do you think it's possible to stream together, or will stream and I, or you will stream and I will record or something? Do you mean like when you say stream together? Do you mean like hang out on stream, or like you'll be streaming and I could come on like a webcam or something? Because that'd be like I know what some people do is like you could stream and then you could put me on in Skype or something if you want to do something like that. Okay, well that worked this time. Cool. Um, let's do, we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna add some computers and some humans here. So I'll put my keyboard and two computers. But yeah, Rana, if you wanna stream together, that would be totally cool. Oh, you don't stream because you're internet's shitty? That's too bad. Um, yeah, no, we could totally do that. That would be awesome. Uh... Oh, I'm Jade. Probably should have decreased the lives just to test out the game over panels, but it's okay. We'll get some bug testing in as well while we're working on this. Always doing QA. Yeah, Ron, that would be cool. We could get on like Skype. We could chat while we're playing or while you're playing or while I'm playing. Yeah, for sure. We'll do it in 2016, man. Ah, just got killed again. 
I am the red pirate cat, Jade. So all the other characters except for Finn are missing their melee attacks right now. They will just kind of step forward like a goof. Because so you can see the two characters just like flew past each other right there because they're trying to melee each other. All right, so we have got two human players, one, two computers. So if I hit A on my gamepad, absolutely nothing will happen. If I hit E on my gamepad, absolutely nothing. I mean, my keyboard, nothing will happen. And you don't need frozen. Okay. Shit. Okay. So what did I do? Oh crap! I th think I just realized I have a. Oh, Robin Jade. Yeah, I have to actually put her back. So I recently had to redo all of the character skins. Um, and so Robin Jade, which was just a Christmas skin, uh, isn't in the game right now. And actually, she might not be in it when you come back from holiday because you're going to be gone in France. You're going to go to France, right? So by the time you get back, she's going to be replaced with Valentine's Day Finn. Uh, sorry, Valentine's Day Jade. Sorry. So it's basically what happens is for each ho for the for some holidays, the skins will switch. So it was um, Christmas skins, which were pink, sorry, red, green, and uh, white from November to January. And then from January to like February, it's going to be Valentine skins. Um, in, uh, in the loading screen, since you don't see Finn's left hand, it looks like he's limping. Let's take a look at that. Finn splash or Finn promo? Nope. Where's the loading screens? I think it's in sprites. Promo. Finn. Ah, oh, I see what you mean, Ranhu. Yeah. No, that's funny. It will. Yeah. So basically, like next November. So Ranhu asked if it, if uh, it'll stay forever. Next November, it, you'll uh, the Christmas skins will turn back on, uh, which is kind of how I'm thinking about doing it right now because I don't want to have like way too many skins, so it'll feel kind of special. Oh, not here. Before you log into the game. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, the loading screen, right. They don't have hands in the loading screen. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The In the launch screen. So this one chooses a random character each time. And Finn doesn't have... Oh, there we got him too. See, so you mean here because you can't see his other arm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean because it's his running animation, but he doesn't have an arm. See, so yeah, maybe I could have all of them have their little arms sticking forward as if they are running in game. That makes that's a really good point. I'm gonna actually write that down here on my desk. So my desk is actually a giant whiteboard, so I just write down everything that people say on it. So arm in loading screen. Great point, Ronho. It is kind of funny, yeah. So I think I have a, uh, what is it called? When you, like a infinite loop or whatever in my code, which is, oops. Where am I doing it? I think it's on the confirm, yep, okay. Not what I meant to do here. <laughs> so basically the confirm button is calling the panel controller, the panel controller is calling the confirm button, the confirm button is calling the panel controller, the panel controller is calling the confirm button. So that should be in here. Basically what's happening is that both scripts are calling each other infinitely and indefinitely. So I'm going to turn on debug again so we could make this a little bit faster. Actually no, you know what, it was actually pretty good testing. So we're not going to do that, let's jump into a test match. Mute the audio. Here's a dynamic camera, guys, zooming in and out. Punch. So the problem is here, the camera's not moving right to center these guys on screen. So that's one of the bugs with the camera. And it's because I need to scale the min and max bounds. Actually, Foch, if you're listening and you have any advice on that, that would be awesome. Although maybe I'll just ask you in person so I can explain it to you. But basically the camera has a min and max bounds in which it can move, but when it zooms in, that bounds should get bigger because otherwise it's just staying within the same bounds as when it was zoomed all the way out. So like 
what math would I use to scale that? I have no idea. Ron, who you can't even win against normal? <laughs> yeah, I usually fight against the hard bots. Uh, but that's mostly because I'm their mother, so I know how they behave. Let's fight against all fins here. So we all have our little chomp. Actually, I'll switch them over to hard. I probably can't win against hard, actually. They've been getting better and better, which is not necessarily a good thing. I need to add some more fuzz logic in there. AI. Yeah, oh yeah, and keyboard is super hard. Right, I totally forgot you don't have a, um, a gamepad. Yeah, keyboard does make it super hard. Sorry about that. You want Grimlock? He's on the beta right now. You could play as him, but you have a flight to catch soon, so that's probably not a good idea. But he'll be releasing for sure as soon as I can in January. Basically, so I want Grimlock to be an unlockable, an unlockable character. So what I really just need is what the hell you do to unlock him. Oops. Um, and for that, what I, want to do, what I want to do is I want to work on some of the single player stuff and make it today if you beat like the first few levels of single player, then you unlock Grimlock. And now that he's done, you know, all I have to do is make the content to unlock him and not worry about animating him and his sound effects and all that stuff. Here, oh, cool, Rhino, I'll show you. So the, the beta is on Steam. If you right click the game in your Steam library and go to properties, there's a tab for beta. And there you just have to enter the password. And the password is fish out of water. I'll type that into chat here. So for anybody else who wants to join in on the beta, the password is fish out of water. And basically what you see there, if you're on the beta branch, you'll always have whatever we're working on here in stream. So at the end of the stream, I usually uh, push everything up to the beta branch. Uh, and so you'll be playing what I'm playing on my developer computer. Oh. Um, yeah, so I mean, the great thing about it is you'll get new features like Grimlock, like melee attacks. The bad thing about it is the game will be broken. So definitely uh, not use it if you're recording any videos or if you're playing with any friends. Oops. Oh man, I missed that shot. Uh, because there is a chance that something like, you know, certain animations might be broken. So then you could always just switch back. You could switch back in Steam anytime between the beta and the non-beta. Actually, Ron, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you here on stream real quick. It's super easy. I got Steam loading up right now. Once it loads up, I'll pull it over. Just get this goal. Ah. All right, here we got Steam over here. So you go over to your library and you find Skyhook in your library. You right click, go to properties. And then here in properties, you go to betas. And then here in betas, it'll ask for the password and the password is fish out of water. You do check code and then now private beta will show up as one of your options for the game. And then you'll know you're on the private beta because Steam will have it labeled right here next to your game. And then now you'll always be playing on my version of the game. And then anytime you want to switch back to the real version, you just go right back to properties, betas, and then just go to none. You'll be back on the regular Steam version of the game. Just know that when you do switch to the beta, Steam's going to have to download the updates so they can match your game to my game. Oh, that's funny. I just used the melee attack as a, a double jump, a forward jump instead of using dash. Winner! All right, what are we doing? Oh yeah, we're testing if this works. Okay, it works this time. No um, infinite looping recursive calls. Hey Fudge, when you say gimme, you mean the beta branch? Yeah, definitely jump onto it. Become a exclusive member of the Skyhook beta team. There's no Grimlock on the beta. Oh, crap. Thanks. Yes. Good call there, Ron Hu. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hold on, I'm going to add this in right now. Uh, data manager. Yeah, don't worry. I can have it back on the beta in seconds. 
So let's go to load data. So basically what I have to do is um, load. What's going on? There we go. I basically have to set that boolean to true, which is all it is. Unlock having Grimlock is basically like, you know, just is Grimlock. So I'm gonna do it here. After you load the data, blah 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 blah. Where is it? Uh, actually, should I do it here? Um, just a second. Let's see. I mean, I could just do it in update if I want to get stupid. And booleans are don't really matter. Let's see where low data is called. There we go. So load data. So we'll do it here. So save data. Dot unlock data. Dot Grimlock unlock equals true. And now Grimlock should be unlocked for everyone. So I'll just push that up to Steam right now. All right, Ranu, have a good meal. So I have these cool little build tools where I can just hit one button and it'll automatically build the game for PC and Mac and publish it to Steam, which is one button. I got to sit back here and just drink coffee, which is pretty handy, pretty handy stuff. Meantime, while that's doing that, we will jump into Pixel Edit, my preferred pixel animation program for some reason, even though it hates me and it always screws up. All right, Steam is publishing. So today's first goal, as the title in the stream suggests, we are going to be animating a pirate cat. We are going to be working on Jade's melee attack and right now my idea for that is lost my stylus as always there it is my idea for that is that she is going to scratch because she is a kitty cat um, so yeah I just gotta think through the scratching what helped last time a lot was um, having that picture of a shark biting if anybody was hanging out on stream yesterday when we worked on Finn's bite attack, it just helped having. Did somebody say fish? Hey, She Knight, Shen Knight, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. You are watching Skyhook Game Development, and we are about to animate a pixel cat, pixel art pirate cat, Pratt, Pry cat. I'm stop, I'll stop. I'll stop now. So we are going to make this cat scratch, and I'm looking at. Right now, I'm looking at reference images of cat scratching. I'll do that over here. I'm going to create a quick reference board of just some really angry cats. Here's what I'm looking at here. These cats are so cute. Let's do lion scratch. Lion attack. Just trying to look for some things that will help us just get an idea for how we want Jade to react in her melee attack. Hey, she knight, Shen knight, Shen knight. God, why do I keep saying she knight? The two ends blend together and become one end in my mind. What's going on, Shen knight? What are you up to today? Thanks for hanging out. We are looking at pictures of lions. Let's look up cat attack. This is a good one. This is a good one. All right, just gonna drop those in there. Just gonna take this out and leave it here. Oops. Put this back where it belongs. Keep this here for reference. We're going to sketch out 
some cat attack. I just remember guys, pixel art always starts out super rough. So it's gonna look pretty pretty crazy for a little while and then we're gonna start smoothing it all out. So looking at Finn's bite attack here, it's um, one frame of anticipation followed by one super exaggerated frame of attack. Even his anticipation frame is a little bit exaggerated. And then three frames of just kind of recovering. He overlaps into a biting and then it starts to pull back into the idle frame. So we're gonna try to have Jade's align a lot like that. We're not gonna try to make their attacks super, super different. Shine Knight, not much. You've been pre prepping for Christmas. That's cool, you get all the gifts and stuff you need to get. But you got some like last minute shopping to do. Cause that's almost never a good idea. Let's go find some new music to start this day off with, or start this animation off with. Actually, yesterday, I was getting really into some Necrodancer music. So let's hop into that. If you guys haven't played Crypt of the Necrodancer, super awesome indie game. It's a rhythm roguelike. If, you're, if that doesn't excite you, then I don't know what in life will. So we're going to set Finn's opacity down here, so we have some reference. So if she's going to scratch, let's think more about her attack frame. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put it here as well, just so we can onion skin it. Okay, maybe I don't want to listen to this after all. Alright, so, attack frame, Jade is a cat that is attacking everyone else. What will she be doing? How will she be scratching? I'm gonna flip this cat right over here so everything is facing right. So she has to use this arm to do the attack. So it could be an upward strike like this. Or it could be a downward strike like this. So, could be an upward strike, could be a downward strike, could be a mostly forward strike. Let's start with this. So we'll just have that exaggerated palm. See if we can work on this pose, her attack pose. So her feet will be outstretched. Because she's diving forward. Shenna, you got all the gifts. Forgot to send out Christmas. Oh. The anticipation is killing me. My window is covered. Christmas cards until today. Hope they arrive on time. Uh, hopefully they're not traveling too far. Yeah, it's not very much time, but I imagine the UPS, or I'm not sure where you live, but I imagine like the mail, whatever mail system uh, you're using is probably scrambling to get as much as they can out in Christmas, out by Christmas time. So yeah, hopefully it all gets there. And I'm sure people won't mind if they get their stuff like a day after or whatever. Just be like, oh, I don't know. I sent it out in time, but the mail probably screwed it up. Shenna, you're really interested in making some sprites for projects. Is Pixel Art any good? You've basically been using Paint, Paint.net so far. Yes, if you've been using Paint, Pixel Art is definitely a big improvement. Uh, it is my, so I use Photoshop for most of my 2D art. Uh, Photoshop is here, but uh, I don't find it is, it's, it's a great tool for starting Pixel Art, uh, or I mean, it's a great tool for doing Pixel Art if you already have it. 
Uh, what I like about Pixel Edit specifically is that it has this real-time playback window. So you see this video, this window right here, if I hit play, it'll constantly be playing. So for example, I'm working on the fin animation. Check that out. It's always playing while I'm animating. So I can keep animating, say I decide to make his eyes bigger. You can see it instantly shows up in the playback. So I can just adjust stuff and just look at it playing. I don't have to hit a play button or render it out or something like that. So it's always playing and it's playing from the sprite sheet. So pixel edit, you just tell it where all the sprites are and then it lays them out. I mean, it has them, you lay them out yourself and then it animates between them. So it's pretty much, my sprite sheet is always ready. I can just export it immediately to Unity. It's always animating, which makes it a lot easier to animate, uh, in my opinion. Um, and it's like $8. So it's a huge bargain over most uh, pixel art programs or just 2D art programs in general. Uh, another great alternative if you don't want to spend any money, actually I think it might have be paid as well. Uh, graphic scale is a great alternative. It also does all the same things. It doesn't do the sprite sheet thing, not as far as I know, but it does have a playback window where you can animate and watch your animation in real time. So that's also an option. Uh, I like Pixel Edit mostly because of this texturing, I mean this sprite sheet to, uh, ability, and also it has a really good tile editing tools as well, uh, where you can like edit multiple tiles at one time and see how they change in real time. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Pixel Edit. It just has, it has a few caveats, but I think it's all made by like one guy. So totally cool. I know how it feels because my game is all made by one guy. All right, so here we go. We've got this attack pose. Don't know if it's just, probably not there yet, but we're gonna you know, start somewhere and go from there. But yeah, Shine Knight, so if you're interested in making some sprites for your project, definitely recommend Pixel Edit. It's a nice step up for animation and stuff like that, and for tile editing. So we'll have our lean back here. Prep her claws. Take a step back. There's her tail. And then she'll land. So right now we're starting out super rough. Right, just getting an idea for the poses, where her body's gonna be. Line this, her feet up here. So she lands and then it gets up. So this frame is held, I believe, a little bit longer. I think this frame might just be too exaggerated. Because we want it to be, we want it to read that she just like slashed. So I'm gonna do something like that. Have this foot hit the ground. If you guys can't tell what I'm doing because it just looks like blurs, don't worry. It'll all start to come together. And you can always look at it here in the playback. Another thing I want to try is adding some, adding a scratch effect. much. All right. So we're going to save this out and just look at it in game. I'm going to fill in some of these areas so she's not completely invisible in the game. Shed Knight, that's a really nice feature. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's super cheap. It's really nice for animating. I mean, I've, I've done so much. I, I didn't used to use Pixel Edit. I've only started reading, using it like in the past few months or so. 
I've, done, I've had to do so much of the same work manually, you know, lining up the sprite sheet or exporting the sprite sheet. But the thing is, once you ex if you if you um, are animating all your stuff separately, and then you export the sprite sheet, and then you need to make a change. And I do a lot of iteration on my game, um, and you want to make a change, then you have to re-export the sprite sheet, and it's just like this keeps it all in one place, which I really appreciate. I can literally just make the change here, and it's just already done in game. I just have to save the image. I don't have to like generate the sprite sheet or anything like that. Worry about things going out of place. Let's grab some white for the slash effect. Gonna mess with her feet a little bit here. All right, I'm gonna save that out as her main sprite. Jump into the game here. We'll go into the test scene. We're gonna set our test character to Jade. We're gonna make sure debug is turned on. Alrighty then. Hey Fletch, I am listening to Gerudo Valley Dubstep Remix by Efixa. Download at Efixa.com Del Zelda Dubstep. And there's a the link. I found it the other day by accident and it was pretty sweet stuff. No reference exception. Uh, it's just the GUI. Uh, let's delete all this stuff, we don't need it. Oh, okay, there we go. So, let's see her attack here. Let me turn off team mode and all that stuff. not quite there. Doesn't look anywhere nearly as cool as Finn's. Looks like she's just socking people in the face. Foot, you're muting me? Ah, goodbye, farewell. I'm glad you like the music though. That's all that matters. Hey Ranhu, welcome back. How was your meal? What you have to eat today? We are prototyping some really bad cat animations here on stream. I'm going to fix her flash texture really quick because that's what's making it difficult to read. It's Jade Flash. This is what's used to do the highlights on the characters. Let's delete these frames here. Four hours of sleep? What? Alright, there we go. That's a lot easier to see now. Still not very good. I think I know what we need. Oh no, I don't know. I have no idea what we need, guys. <laughs> what I do know is her dodge is pretty cool. I wonder what happens if we steal these frames right here. And drop them in here. Around who you all packed, you got your 
your carry-on, your laptop, your laptop charger, your uh, your phone charger, your toothbrush, other things that people regularly forget when they go on trips. It's not quite a cat scratch here. Any cat experts in the audience? Maybe used to getting scratched by their cat. Have any suggestions on how we can improve these cat poses here? I think one of the things is that you can't see her face. So the scratch just goes up a little bit too high. I'm gonna switch over to a regular Necro Dancer song. The one without the silly uh, shopkeeper. Because it makes it kind of difficult for me to think while I'm streaming. Grotum sticks some exaggerated claws on her fist. Ah, that's a really good point. Maybe it's because it's so rounded out. Oops. So let's see if we could, we could add something like that. I think Grotum's got a really good point. So let's see. You guys might find a lot that when I'm animating on stream, I do things like that's just because I'm getting into it, man. The other thing is she actually has brown hands because she wears fingerless gloves. So let's color that in. And then we'll use some black for her claws so that they're super obvious. So it's like this frame, she takes out her claws and then shink flies across throw in some of this brown strike ends right here claws kind of go retract let's give her a face so we are just working on basic pose tests to try and get this animation just right just gonna steal her eyes here. Oh, that one looks super freaky. Actually, I think there's a good face I can grab for that. It is her. Does she have any other weird faces? One of her swing faces? I think her swing faces are all the same. Yeah, let's grab... Alright, let's leave them all alone. Let's do it ourselves. Seems to generally look something like that. And she lunges forward. All right, let's try that out in Unity. Yeah, Ron Who Grimlock's working for you, sweet. Yeah, if anybody wants to try out um, the beta branch of the game, if you own the game on Steam, this is, by the way, Skyhook, a game where you fight with grappling hooks. Oh, look at these white boxes running around. This is also the sequel to Thomas Was Alone. It's called White Box Was Alone, and it's got grappling hooks in it. This is Thomas Was Alone with grappling Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's reload the textures here. Uh, so the game is out now on Steam Early Access, and if you want to be playing the same build that I'm playing as a developer, you can jump onto the private beta. Oh, Grotum, that already looks so much better with the claws. Great suggestion. Obviously needs a lot of touch up, but yeah, the claws are already looking so much better. Got some extra black in there. Um, so you can, if you have the game on Steam, you can play along with me. Not with me, with me, but you can play on the same build that I'm playing on. So before anyone else on Steam gets to play, you can play the developer build. 
you can get access to the private beta with the passcode fish out of water which uh, is here in chat but I'll put it again in chat shout it a boop uh, and that will allow you to play pretty much every day at the end of the stream I'll upload whatever we worked on to the private beta and so you can jump on and play along with us and see all the changes so like right now the newest character who hasn't even been out on Steam or even announced on Steam yet Grimlock the Crab Captain is on the private beta and so you can check that out we made him here on stream last week with all of you guys' help and suggestions which was so awesome and so helpful Just cleaning up some of these missing pixels here so we could get a better pose test so you got slash Fish? Hey, Theodore OD, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. You are watching some Skyhook Pixel Art, a game where you fight with grappling hooks out now on Steam Early Access. We are animating Jade, the pirate cat who's obsessed with treasure. And we are giving her a little melee attack here where she slashes with her claws. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rework this frame to work better with the animation we have. Because this was, this was actually her dodge animation, right? So we don't want to just reuse that. We want to make this work a little bit better with what we just did, which is her claws came out. She just slashed. And then she'll get back up. She'll recover. Just get some more of this brown in her gloves. Or in her hands, I mean. And then she sits up. And then here, this again was from the dodge animation. We're going to rework that, especially to fix the arc. Let's just cut that out, actually. We're going to delete this. We're going to rework that. So the arc of her hand is going from this point up to there. So we're going to put her actual hand somewhere along here as she kind of steps up, steps back up. So again, we're just roughing everything in, just making some blurry little pixels here. Not getting too precious about anything, just roughing it in and seeing what it looks like in the game before we start worrying about actually pixeling the pixel art. Hey Mito, what's going on? Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out today. How are you doing? Good, good, good. We are working on melee attacks. Uh, yesterday on stream we worked on Finn's melee attack where he bites and chomps, which I can show you right here. There he is, chomping away. Today we are working on Jade's melee attack where she scratches the eyes out of anybody who messes with her. We we're just roughing in some pixels here, trying to get it into game, seeing if the poses are working, seeing if they're readable, especially. And uh, Grotum gave me really good feedback to add giant claws to Jade, which has helped for sure in the readability of this animation here. Got some Necro Dancer music going in the background. That's not going to work. Gonna move this so she's a little bit closer to getting up. Fill in some of this stuff here. Again, just getting a feel for the animation right now.
Thanks, Mito. Looks great. Long day. Got a haircut. Nice. Still buying gifts with one day left. Oh, you guys are nuts. One day left to buy Christmas gifts. So if one of the big... That's one of the uh, upsides to being a broke indie dev. Is that everyone knows that I can't afford to get them any uh, Christmas gifts this year. So I got out of that. No Christmas shopping for me. Save that out, jump into the game. Shen Knight, are the melee attack hitboxes the same on all characters? Right now they are. Uh, I think that's going to have to change. It's really going to depend on the different melee attacks. So they're, for the most part, like still fairly similar, right? In that they lunge forward. It's like a forward triangular attack. So we can actually look... Right now the hitboxes are all set to Finn's animation. So we can look at Jade's. It's not exactly accurate. Finn's mouth was here. And for Jade, it should be more along her claw area. So I'm still deliberating between whether that should be different or not. I think it should just to give it a little bit more authenticity, authenticity, a little bit more polish. So it'll be fairly easy. What I'll just do is once the attack animations are done, because I don't want to mess with the hitboxes until the animations are fairly final because the claws could move up or down or whatever. Um, so I'll just create separate little kill boxes. Uh, this little prefab I'm using here, I'll just make separate ones for each character and we'll just swap those polygons out depending on which character you're playing as. So I imagine Jade should probably be something more like this. That'll probably be her kill box. So yeah. What do you think, Shenna? Do you think they should all be different? Do you think they should be the same? Uh, Grotum, it looks so much better with the giant claw sticking out. Thanks for the feedback. Ron, who you hope to get Mario Maker for Christmas? That's awesome. Mito, you're pretty broke too. Saving for a living room and a kitchen. That's Those are some pretty grand things to save for. Yeah, giving gifts is awesome. I used to, I used to definitely be really into it um, when I wasn't full-time indie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's always nice when you can get some, someone something really special that they would have wanted. So what do you guys think? How are you guys feeling about this pose test for Jade's slash animation? So I'll tell you what, we'll play against four Jade bots and see how this is feeling. Four players, bots all but player one. Character test Jade, no testing treasure. Um, let's jump into a real stage and play. Let's go to the castle. Here we go. Gonna head back to my music. Turn this on again. I'm kind of obsessed with this song right now. Let's just turn on shuffle and let that run. Ron, who you love the attack animation? Awesome. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Uh, it gives the game so much more personality now that the characters have little. Ah, oh, just got clawed in the face by the computer. That was awesome. Claude, what up computer? Hop on this griffin. I'm a pirate cat riding on a griffin right now. Life doesn't get any better than that. Oh! There's definitely an interesting bug where the griffin's wing sprite disappears before the griffin actually disappears. It's almost like it's, ah, oh, just got clawed in the face. Shen Knight, this should probably be different, but maintain the same area or surface area. Ah, that's a good point. So essentially they're just like, yeah, the same surface area, but enough so that they're lined up with the animation. Very, very good call. Totally agree with you on that. Uh, Mito, you've been singing for a long time, uh, but you and your girlfriend really do need these spaces so we don't bother my parents all the time. No, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I was lucky. I moved in with my girlfriend recently here in Buffalo. 
and luckily she lives in a house this is like we rent out the apartment and it was completely furnished i'm talking really nice couch two couches uh like shelves uh, dishwasher fridge like all the stuff that you could want gas stove uh we super we got really we lucked out with that it's got a, a driveway it's been pretty awesome i grew up in new york city and then after that i lived in long island so i didn't really have all these amenity amenities never had a dishwasher my entire life until i moved here which is like why would i ever wash my dishes again like seriously except the dishwasher broke a few weeks ago so i guess that's why because the dishwasher is broken all right guys we are testing out jade's pirate melee powers here uh please ignore the fact that they're all green right now in the game you can't actually choose the same colors everybody will be different colors this is the testing mode so i just set them all to be the same sprite and I think it's looking pretty sweet. It's feeling pretty good. It's feeling as good as Finn's uh, bite attack, which is awesome. Hopefully it's readable. People in, who are playing are gonna get it. Once we work on the actual pixel art, we can worry about opening up her pose a little bit more. And just so you know, the melee attacks actually block hooks. They can slash incoming cannonballs, but the cannonballs will explode and so they'll probably still die. Um, and they can block each other. So if you, Jade could use her claws to melee Finn, who's trying to bite her, and that should clash them both back. Boom. One on a, sh a strike attack. Ron, who you're talking about a house and you want smite stuff. <laughs> That's totally true. Oh man. That's funny, the big difference. All right, guys, let's start cleaning this up. Fleshing out this pose, these poses, dem poses. After all, the title of this stream is animating a pixel art pirate cat. So let's animate a pixel art pirate cat. Let's do it together. <clears throat> you know, that's lucky here. People usually just stay with their parents and build additions, or if they have space, build like an apartment, which you're doing since almost nobody can afford houses anymore. Pretty sad. Apartments in the city are pretty expensive. Ah, uh, yeah. Mito, you know, where where are you living again? It's a, it's a lot like that uh, from the country that I was born in, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, and it's culturally like that, so my parents kind of expect it too, where you pretty much, you know, you grow up in a house and then you grow up with your parents and you don't leave. Like, it's very much like a Western notion that you grow up and get your own place, right? Um, but yeah, definitely, like, culturally for me, it was that my parents expected that you would kind of stay with them forever. But, um, but yeah, I, I totally needed my own freedom. And so here I am, making indie games on Twitch. Slovenia, yes, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that last time. Sorry about that, I will remember that for next time. Just throwing in some overlap on her ears really quick. Let's start, we're gonna start looking at the poses area by area looking at her head right now and also thinking about ways that we can open the pose up so it's more clear for example here we can almost make it like make it really obvious that this claw is out right so don't let the claw overlay on the body let it really stand out right there Trying to look at the claw shape. It's a little bit too far from her body right now. We're gonna grab her head and just, I love to do this a little bit. You can always cheat like this, right? Just grab the old head. We're gonna put it here. Oh, it's not there. We are gonna put it here. We're gonna push and we're just gonna mess with this a little bit to make it match what we need. So overlap the ears. Mito, it's the same over there for you guys. 10 years ago, everybody was building houses. Now it's very different. But you wanna one day build your own house. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that would be awesome. Kind of like, Get, get to talk with the architect about how you would want it and stuff. Build it the way you want. Get your house on MTV Cribs. 
if you guys <laughs> remember what that show was it was an old show on this on MTV where they would show like uh, celebrities houses and how crazy they were all right so we are working on adjusting this pose trying to make it as clear as possible that Jade is ripping out her claws which who even knew she had claws but of course she does she's a cat her claws were never clipped guys she is ready to strike working out her pose clean it up clean it it up cleaning it up cleaning it up cleaning it up adding her fingerless gloves here making sure they're reading put a little bit of shade there between between the fingers under the fingers It's definitely going to be a challenging pose to get right. Trying to use these lights and shadows to explain the shape of her claw and that she's wearing gloves. Looking at it in playback. If you guys ever see the animation, just pause. because I'm staring at the playback and going, what the f am I doing? Ah, uh, Mito, you remember MTV Cribs? Yeah. Yeah, it was so crazy. Like, it's too bad they don't have that kind of show anymore. It was definitely like, one of those things you could just watch and be like, oh man, I want that one day. Like, it'd be great if they had, like, the modern edition. They would have, like, Notch's house and stuff. The creator of Minecraft. All right, so she sticks her claw out, bends her arm back, whips her tail down. Boom. So you notice when I'm animating, I'm doing a lot of just framing or flipping the animation back and forth between the frames, looking for the relationship between every pixel, or at least the area I'm focusing on. So right now I'm focusing on her chest. So looking at the relationship between every pixel on her chest, how it would be moving from one frame to the next. Sometimes getting it wrong, going back and adjusting it. Right here I can see that her body is going too many pixels back. So it's here. So the next frame I want it to just be here. Alright. So I just want her body to shift back by one pixel for this move. Here we go. Mito, you'll buy the game in the future. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate the support. And hey, if you guys like the game, you know, please tell your friends. Help us get the word out there. When I say us, I just mean me, because it's just me working on the game right now. <clears throat> and I appreciate all of you guys' help and support and hanging out here in chat. You guys are awesome. When I started streaming, I had no idea what a what a, what a great crew I would have just hanging out with me on stream. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Ooh. Trying to get her belt right. Cause she's bending her waist up. I wonder if I should just keep it the same. I'm just going to steal that jump back I think what's happening is her waist is starting to get too wide yeah there it is it is for sure so again I want to keep everything keep the volume similar keep it all all on model on model on model keep her legs about the same width as the previous frame I 
I can just steal these toes, plop them in here. So there's some, already some pretty well-drawn toes, in my professional opinion. Vito, Twitch is pretty awesome, and you love that they added game development. Yeah, me too. I'm so glad they did. Uh, so many awesome people. Yeah, totally. Me too. I was. Uh, it was really cool. I was actually just last night. It was like 2 a.m. Eastern time here, and I was working on the game. I was actually working on the uh, testing it on Windows 10 and porting it over to Unity 5.3, and it was super boring. It was really quiet in my house. So yeah, I just jumped on Twitch, ran over to the game development channel, and watched some other dev streaming, and oh, it was so cool. So cool that they added that, because I mean it was definitely fun watching games before, but now it's even even cooler being able to watch other people and how they make games and how they do it. Uh, and the craziest thing was, I ran into somebody who hangs out on stream here, which was super, uh, what's the word, uh, coincidental or whatever, and that was awesome. I mean, it reminded me of like how much Twitch really is like a community and like a like a place, like a family to hang out with. All right, we got our first pose in there. She take or clink or what is it? Like takes out her claws. Giant claws here, very exaggerated frame. I love it. She takes a step back. Might shift these pixels back. Right here. Oh. What's going on? There we go. Shift that back. Mm, I'm not sure. Gonna undo that for now. We might even be able to shift this all back even more. Just gonna grab everything and shift her back. Yeah, gotta trying to push this as much as I can. Maybe shift it back even more. Get crazy. Whoop! What did I break? Huh? Oops! I had selected more than this frame, and I made her skinny in that first frame. Let's just undo that undo that and look everything is gone all right let's grab this let's stay, make sure we stay within this frame grab all of that one two or I'm shift back two pixels and we'll move our feet back with it and we'll adjust some of these pixels here so it really looks like she's taking a step back, really exaggerating these melee attack poses, trying to get some more life into the game. Vito, you think it looked better not shifted? Uh, so you're saying with like uh, less pixels backwards? Or did you mean when I was shifting the feet? Because yeah, the feet definitely didn't look good. Now it looks better than before. Yeah, no, I totally agree, Mito. Yeah, because what I was trying to do, I was trying to shift that those three pixels in the foot back, and I realized the feeling I was trying to get was that she's really leaning back more. So I should just really make her leaner, but leaning back more. A really cool thing I learned when I was at Animation Mentor um, was uh, it's much better to push your animation too far because it's easier to pull it back. I think this is true for all kinds of arts, like painting and drawing and stuff. So like push it really far, because it's easier to pull it back and it's harder to push it later on. JV the Wanderer, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out today. Welcome to the stream. You're just wandering around. Thanks for wandering straight into the Skyhook stream. That's right, Mito, just a few pixels and it looks so much better. That's the crazy thing about pixel art, right? Because if I just add like this pixel here under her eyes, like that's a huge deal. Now apparently she has like a beauty mark under her eye and I have to make sure it's there in every single frame. Like it's insane. Or if I made it like two, then maybe she has whiskers. Like a few pixels make such a big difference. It's so insane. JV the Wanderer, how are you doing? We are animating Jade the Pirate Cat. So this is going to be an interesting frame because I actually don't have any frames I could steal from. She's going into complete profile. 
So we're all on our own here, guys, but let's do it. Let's animate this cat. JV the Wanderer, what's the size dimension of the sprites? Uh, all the characters are, uh, the bound, the box here is 38 by 38. Uh, generally the characters are around 32 tall, I believe. Let's take a look. So Jade here is, yep, 32 pixels tall. Their colliders are about the size of their body, like their torso. So it's about seven pixels wide and she's about 32 pixels tall. Runa is like 34. Grimlock is the full, like he's like 36 or 37. They generally vary a little bit in height. Um, I think Anara is the shortest because she doesn't have the ears. Like Jade's ears make her two pixels taller. But yeah, the box, the bounding box for the sprites are 38 by 38, which is just something like a dimension that I was stuck with because that's why I started making all the sprites in. I could still increase it, but I'd have to like remake the sprite sheet and like reorganize everything. Um, so I'm just dealing with that limitation, and it helps me not get too out of control and just add like giant sprites or something. There we go, her ears flapping back as she jumps forward. You know, pixel art's your favorite because it appeals to you in a way no other style does. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. This is actually my first time doing pixel art. And when I started this game, I was mostly doing 3D art. And when I say this is my first time, I don't mean like today, but I mean working on this game. And when I started, I mostly did 3D art. So I actually set out to make the game in 3D at first. And I was working on 3D models of all the characters. Uh, I tell this story all the time and it's because what happened is and I learned so much from this, what happened is the characters were so small on screen, you couldn't even tell, you couldn't even see some of the details in their 3D models. And so their eyes just became one pixel. So this giant diffuse texture I painted of their eyes was just one pixel on screen. And that's when I realized like the, the better style for this game might actually be pixel art, at least for this, the current resolution it's in, which is, you know, the characters are very, very small on screen. So yeah, Pixar is really cool. There's so you can you can do so much with so little. And what's also the other big improvement too is that, especially working on working by myself, being a solo developer, is that the iteration time is a lot less. So if I want to make a change to one of the characters, it takes a lot less time than having to reskin the character, reanimate the character in 3D, change the 3D model. Alright, I'm gonna turn off onion skin here. Got the arm here, slashing forward. This giant claw, We're gonna adjust the fingernails here, make them more readable, and a little bit more on model with the character. Sharp stuff is really hard in pixel art because you get like these weird triangular shapes. At least hard for me. Probably easier for other people. There we go. Gonna add in some shading for the glove here. Mito, yeah, it's understandable. Uh, you found me by looking for cool pixel artists on Twitter. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, love looking at so many different styles of pixel. I really love uh, pixels. Pixels Han. No, I don't know him. Let's let's look that up. Pixels Han. Huh? Oh, this is awesome. Wow. Yeah, this guy's oh, that's super super awesome talent. Oh, I have seen them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he does these crazy elaborate little dioramas. Totally, yeah, yeah, I follow him. Oh, I didn't really, uh, yeah, I totally forgot his name. Pixel, huh? This guy is amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks for sharing. If you guys want to check it out, 
really great pixel artist. Speaking of pixel art, I was thinking about doing today's uh, pixel dailies. I always enjoy doing those to kind of do some pixel art outside of Skyhook, which I'm always doing. I think today's theme is uh, elves. I'm trying to think of a good uh, a good drawing to do for elves. If I can think of a good one, maybe I'll do it on stream today. If I want to do something like something kind of wacky with it or something crazy with it, you know, the kind of stuff we like to do here on stream. You guys know. You guys know. Oh yeah, Mito. He, I mean, he must be spending so many hours on just uh, just getting all those pixels right. I mean, oh man, such fine-tuned artwork in his stuff. It's insane. Definitely an inspiration. Here we got Jade slashing forward. Try to make sure we can get that arm readable in this one frame. Get that belt readable. Make sure her body is on model. As always, I'm always kind of saying the same stuff, guys, but just what I have to, I'm just. What I gotta keep thinking about. Is it on model? Is it on model? Yes, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And it's just doing that back and forth. It's something that I used to neglect a lot when I was starting out in art in general, is making sure, like, especially when I was doing comic books when I was younger, like, making sure characters are on model. And once you make sure, or once you stress out about that stuff, it's, it makes your art so much better because then your character looks consistent and people think, people, um, can recognize what's going on. So if you guys ever feel like my stuff's not on model, feel free to shout out in chat, let me know. I appreciate any and all feedback all the time. Let's see. I'm trying to get her little pause here. I think I have a really good flying paw for her over here. Yep. I'm gonna grab this. So one of the annoying things about Pixel Edit for anyone who's thinking about trying it out, uh, it's not context sensitive to your frame edit. It's context sensitive to your canvas here. So if you're trying to copy and paste stuff, you need to worry about it in the canvas, not in your frame. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to put that here. I'm going to erase these feet. All right, I'm going to put these feet in. Yeah, that pose looks so much better now. Highlight on the belt it should be shifted forward because she's lunging forward. There we go. Again, her legs are going a little bit off model here, they're a little bit too thick. So, adjusting that, her back is getting way too wide here. Adjusting that. Again, looking at if I should shift this stuff back or not, and I think I will. Sh oh, shit. Shift that back. 
but shift this forward. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna add that extra bit of yellow here. What's going on in chat, guys? The movie Krampus is not bad. Oh yeah, you saw that last time we were hanging out. But not good. <laughs> just mediocre, worth a watch. Well, you said you're just a fan of horror movies in general, right? That's probably why you thought it was like, not bad, but not good. There we go, we've got our belt more in line. We're gonna save this out, jump into game, see how things are feeling. It's probably feeling pretty good. I'm saying that preemptively. I think it's pretty feeling pretty good. Got four jades here. Look at that claw attack. So cool. Oh man. This game's starting to become like a little bit of a mini brawler, which is awesome. With the ads of this melee with the addition of his melee attacks. Mito, would you recommend Krampus as uh Krampus, sorry. Krampus is one of the kind of movies you wait for it to come out on like DVD? Or like is it even worth seeing in theaters if you just kinda of, got nothing to watch? It's insane, this game looks nothing like the game I started out making, which is a good thing. Ah, oh, it's got blown up on the side of that ship. If you guys have ever seen this, look at this castle right now, right? This is King's Fall in Skyhook as it is today, right? I'm gonna show you guys what King's Fall used to look like when this game was on Steam Greenlight. It's insane. Check this out. This was the original castle. This was King's Fall. This was King's Fall for a long time, almost like six to seven, eight, maybe, yeah, a very, very long time. Uh, this looks nothing like the game we're playing today. Uh, and it's insane, and I knew that. I knew that at the time. I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know how to get past there. It was actually thanks to Catherine Murray, who did the illustrations, the loading screens. She was the one who helped me realize what King's Fall needed to look like and what the stages need to look like overall. I mean, the tombs has always pretty much been the same. It was solid from the get-go. Uh, I'd seen some revisions here and there. Uh, and so has Frog. It's been fairly solid. It's got its few additions here and there. Uh, there used to be a red fin. That's not a thing anymore. But yeah, Kings, it's, it's insane where King's Fall has come from where it is. This is King's Fall then. This is King's Fall now. Very much not the same game. Which is awesome. This is actually the same stage too. It's just been adjusted a little bit. Gargoyles are gone. R.I.P. Gargoyles. Oh, I'm out of coffee. Mito would be better on DVD. If you knew how if you knew how it was, you'd probably wait. That's all good. There wasn't really much out in theaters at the time anyway, right? You went like last week. Oh, it just got squashed. Nope, out of lives. Let's restart. So yeah, guys, the uh, melee attack is looking good. Thanks again to Grotum for the advice on adding giant claws, big meaty claws to Jade. Ah, almost got him. And again, if you guys are on Steam, Theodore looks great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. If you guys have the game on Steam, this will be up on the private beta at the end of today, at the end of today's stream. So definitely look for that if you have the game. The passcode is fish out of water. If you don't know how to get to the private beta, definitely ask me in chat and I'll show you guys on stream. Get up, come on, computer. This is Skyhook. It's a game where you fight with grappling hooks. You can play as one of four characters, one of them being Jade, the pirate cat who we're working on right now. You can swing around with your grappling hook. You can kill people with your grappling hook. Oops, I missed that kill right there. You can mount these vehicles here, like that computer is mounted on that flying airship that shoots cannonballs. Gah! There's other mounts in the game as well. Treasure chests that drop power-ups. This game is out now on Steam, early access. This is a power-up that drops cannons on all your enemies. Alright. 
cool. So we'll work on the next few frames of her animation and she'll be good to go. We can put her up on beta. So here's the other character we made yesterday. This is Finn. When he does his melee attack, he chomps. He tries to eat you. Jade scratches. And right now, we're, next we're gonna have to work on Runa and Anara. So let's get done with Jade. So let's jump back into Pixel Edit. Pixel, pixel, edit, edit. All right, again, looking at her model, a little bit off model here. Thin out her back, thin out her head. Overlap on the ears. If I ever use any animation terms that you guys don't completely understand, always feel free to ask me in chat. I love talking about this stuff. Add some of that highlight in to her head. Some shadow here on the bottom. So I'm just flipping back and forth between the two frames. Trying to line it up. I'm seeing that our head is starting to shrink. Not what we want. Want to make sure we keep that head on model. Man, even I'm getting sick of hearing that term. Here we go. When you guys are animating, it always helps to just kind of flip like this back and forth. Just imagine yourself flipping between a flip book, like different pages in a flip book. You want to overlap the ears back because she's still the momentum is still going forward. Bring these down. I wonder if she should close her eyes. Not too sure. Finn closes his eyes on his melee attack, but you probably don't want to close your eyes when you're attacking someone, right? Actually, it looks a little bit cuter. She like blinks when she does it. Then we can have her opening her eyes. Yeah, it looks so cute. Animating a pirate cat here, guys. This is Jade from Skyhook. She loves treasure and she loves fish. If you guys, uh, when you guys follow me, uh, whenever someone follows you guys hear that sound, that's actually Jade's voice shouting fish. Did somebody say fish? She is voiced by the very talented Jasmine Moran. If you guys play the game, you'll, you'll notice that all the characters have different voices they use. Fish? Did somebody say fish? Uh, there it is, Trashcan5112. Thanks for triggering that right on time. There's Jade's voice. Uh, and also, thanks for the follow, Trashcan. Welcome to the crew. You're an official member of the Skyhook crew animating pirate cats here in the sky I'm working on this steam game where you fight with grappling hooks out now on steam early access looks cool thanks trash can All 
right. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm trying to get her claws to look right. Uh, I'm trying to make sure it reads that she's wearing fingerless gloves, but it's really tough with this diagonal here. This diagonal pose. So we're going to do a little more like that. Also got this like effect that kind of happens. Let's see if we can. There's like this slash effect that happens, so it kind of looks like it's disappearing. Just go back to her body. Add a little bit of shading. Starting to move a little bit quicker here. The clock is always ticking, guys. The clock on how long I'll be alive and how long it's going to take me to finish this damn game. So we'll start moving a little bit quicker now that we have a good idea of what her animations are going to look like. Pretty happy with this one so far. It's definitely going to be one of the more fun melee attacks. Hopefully we can get them all looking this good. And I really I owe it to you guys for all the feedback and for the help on deciding when things are pushed far enough and when they're looking good. So yeah, seriously, thank you. Already noticing something really quick here. Uh, so one of the caveats is that I'm trying to use the same melee animation for the ground and for the air. So it means that their feet can never be planted like that, right? So I'm gonna. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move her up for these two. Actually, for all of them, I'm going to move her up. Whoop, lost it. Same here. Move her up by one. So, A, it'll look like she kind of jumps, which is great because then it'll always work on the ground because it looks like she's jumping. I'm going to steal these feet for our next frame. I'm going to put them over here for safekeeping and delete these old feet. those on. We'll animate those, you know, we'll make them separate too. So like we'll pull these back a little bit. There you go. And we'll have to get rid of these. What we want to do is use these pointed down feet so that she's still in the air. Same here. And of course, we're going to adjust that when we get to these frames. We have to animate them because right now it's looking pretty bonkers. Even, uh, like again, push everything, right? So we can push these two frames even more. So she really jumps. So I screwed up her feet a little bit here. Just move that up. Copy, paste, put that over here. So we're going to move these. So it looks like she's not just slashing, but she's actually jumping and slashing, which is what a cat might do, right? A cat would lunge at you and slash. So it can be, the, so she goes up and then forward. So we can move this a little bit forward. And then comes down and lands. Now we might want to flat. So I'm pretty sure that later on I'm going to have to make separate air and ground ones. Just because I'm going to get really annoyed when I don't see them <coughs> overlapping when their feet don't hit the ground properly. But for starters we won't because A, we don't know what's going to change. We don't know what's going to stay in the game and what's not going to stay in the game. So we're going to try to minimize doing too much work 
early on when we don't know for sure if these animations are going to be exactly right. Okay, just opening up the pose here on the fingers, sorry, on the, on the nails. Okay, so slash, claw goes down, this one is bigger, this one is smaller. Let's get the legs in there. feet moving, erase this extra pixel, you can even push this feet out, just push your toes back for a single pixel here. there. Nope, I'm going to erase that. Let's see, I don't think we need that pixel. I'm just going to save this. Mangles9, don't tell me you use StreamBot. Um, for alerts and stuff, I use StreamPro.io. Do you, are you recommending, <laughs> is that a giant screaming baby emoji? I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, uh, is StreamBot, do you recommend StreamBot for alerts and stuff? Or were you saying it's terrible? I feel like usually don't tell me means don't tell me because it's terrible. And you're a terrible person. Or I'm a terrible person. Most of the frames in. Let's get more body animation here. So strike. This arm is way too big. Don't need all of those pixels there. We're gonna have the shirt kind of wrap around. So the shading of her arm is usually this darker one at the bottom. And then this as the shadow. Let's get some shading into her gloves. Ron has got some new codes for a Trove giveaway. That's awesome, dude. Feel free to share the link if you've got a giveaway for a game. Trove looks really cool. I haven't got to play yet, but I've watched some of your videos. Looks like an awesome game. It's like mega, super mega awesome Minecraft times 10. Slash, dive. Watching the playback now, checking to see areas that look maybe look too jagged or don't look on model. I feel like these fingernails are a little bit shifted too high. done. There we go. Hmm, struggling between how exaggerated, I feel like this, this is the most exaggerated frame here, so I feel like this should be as big as possible and as pushed as possible. And then like I said before, we, if it's too pushed, we can always pull it back. Uh, 
that. We can add some grays to the fingernails. Trying to figure out the eyes here. That's not working. Hmm, this is tough. You're going to just bring the eyes all the way forward. Yep, that's a lot better. Basically what happens is her bandana is also tr is also the shape of her eyebrows. So without that bandana being perfectly over her eyes, it really screws up the shape of her eyes. There we go. More exaggerated attack frame. not forget the tail here so if she's diving forward then the tail can go down she lands oh my gosh this frame is all kinds of poop right now <laughs> at least it has the head though it does have the head we're gonna move this effect over so she slashes that could be a little bit more there So here her claws retracting. So it's going from there to there to there. So we can have it out a little bit more. Again, we're watching the arcs on the claw right now. Looking at the feet, which are getting a little bit, well, we're looking way off model because they're going from like really long to suddenly really squished in. Inside feet's okay. Just get the arm in here really quick. Look at her normal head shape, so that's missing here. It's the shape of her chin. Can't see that here. Can't really see it here. You should be able to see it right there. So here we'll be shrinking down her claws as they get pulled in, as the exaggeration of the animation comes to an end. Scan that arm to come into the body, fixing up this head shape. This 
bandana is starting to freak out. It's going a little bit too high. The head might be coming down too low. No, I think that's just good, actually. So we're going to add the back of the bandana here. Put some of the shading back right there. There we go. Looking at the movement of all the body parts right now, starting with the head and looking at the head as I frame through. Watching the arc of the head, is it smooth? Arc of the ears. When I say arc, I mean where on screen they're moving. See how it's kind of arcing up like that and going back down. Same with the head, it's easing nicely. Is the nose there when it should be? It's always one pixel underneath her eyes. It seems like it should be in this frame, but that looks weird. Oh, probably because I should be up here. Okay. This nose looks like it's one pixel too far to the left. Again, making sure we add a little bit of skin because she's wearing fingerless gloves. <laughs> so we want to get that other leg back in. So let's turn on our onion skin. So it should be coming in just about there. So the back line is lit a little bit lighter and the front line is lit a little bit darker. So here we'll make the toes start coming down folding in for the landing. I feel like this toe should still be up and this toe is going to hit first because that was the lower toe overall. It's always nice to have your feet hit the ground on different frames, so it's not all exactly the same. It's like the hand covers the feet there, it looks kind of like it's pants. Hey, hi sight, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming by. How's everything going? Getting ready for the holidays? Oh, indeed, sir. Oh, indeed. This is. Oh, I gotta tell everybody on stream that. The fact that we are sitting here working on melee attacks for the characters is almost entirely this guy's fault. High sight in chat. So if you like melee attacks, thank him. If you hate melee attacks, then tell him to go to hell. But thanks to that guy. Uh, just kidding about the go to hell thing. Thanks to this guy, we are working on melee attacks for Skyhook. And today we are working on Jade's melee attacks. That's right, high sight. You ruined everything. Exactly. Skyhook will never be the same because of you. And when everyone on Steam on the Steam forums complains about melee attacks, I'm gonna be like, here's High Sight's email address, go talk to him. Totally his fault. But yeah, so Finn is done. Finn's got his melee attacks in. I'll show you that in just a sec. Now we're working on Jades. I'll export this to show you. So I'll check this out. 
<clears throat> There's Jade. She's got her little scratch attack here. Alright, I'm gonna turn in, put on two players so you guys can zoom in a little bit more. All in on melee eyesight, that's right. Here we go. Get up here, computer. Let's get some zoomed action going. Oh, I turned invisible. Well, I just meleeed him, I swear. Oh, I should show, I should stop making you invisible when you melee people. Cause like when you hook people you, and when you dodge, you stop being invisible. So there's Jade's melee attack. Oh, just got blown up by the computer. And Finn's got one too. We switch over to Finn. There's Finn's melee. You see me on the top right. He does a little chompity chomp chomp. He tries to eat you. Ah, oh, I missed that computer. Cannonball is greater than melee. So you can actually melee the cannonball, but it will kill you because it'll explode in your face. So if you're Finn, you could bite the cannonball and it'll just explode in your face. But you can also bite hooks that are coming towards you and deflect them back. Thank you, science. <laughs> That's right. Shark's teeth, cannonballs, sky hook, grappling hooks. But yeah, hi, so thanks again, man, for your feedback. Definitely made a huge difference to my game. There is. There's a one frame wind up to the melee. I'm still. Um, that's still something I'm going back and forth on. I think it adds a little bit of a difference in the mechanics to the game, so it's not exactly instant, and so you have to kind of strategize when you use it. You can't just like spam melee all the time. Uh, so I'm curious to see how people feel about that in game. But yeah, if you if you want to play later, you can hop onto the beta branch uh, on Steam. The passcode is Fish Out of Water. Uh, you can get on the beta branch, and everything we do today, all the melee attacks will be on Steam, uh, on the on the beta branch on Steam. So I'd love to get everybody's feedback hanging out in chat today about how you feel about it. It is by default mapped to the X button. L button is now dodge. So taunting has been removed until I get that back in the game. Oh, just got bit in my butt. But yeah, Highside, how do you feel about the wind up to the melee? It's about a very small, but it is there. Actually, it's not one frame, right? It's a two frame wind up. Yep, totally forgot. There's the lean back. Oh, no, he has one frame. There's the lean back and then the crunch. Switch back to Jade here. Jump back into our cat pixel art. So here we've got, still got to animate the tail, which will start, let's see, tail's going this way, so it's going to start curling back in, Starts curling back in, 
She's pulling her arm back in from all this fighting. She looks super sleepy and tired. That's because she was blinking. wonder if I should get rid of that extra blink frame. That's what I think is better, because that way, in screenshots, she won't look like she's super sleepy and tired on that frame. Just putting her fingers back in here, this time with no claws. But yeah, for everybody who gets to try out the new uh, melee attacks on Steam Branch, I'd love to know your feedback on, on, um, hold on, the claws do have highlights. I've been, I've been neglecting the highlights on the claws. But I'd love to get your feedback on how you feel about the anticipation in the attack. If you think it's too much, too little, if there should be none at all. So here she pulls her arm back in. Other arm is down, we haven't really worried about that one yet. Her feet are looking okay. There's her belt. Belt should be a little bit higher. So it's starting to get really confusing here between her arms and her legs. little bit of a remnant of her claws there as they get retracted in. I can see the arc of this hand isn't quite working in the playback. There we go. Shift, just shifting it around pixel by pixel in the edit and then watching how it looks in the playback. It's nice too, it looks like she's in a boxing pose, which would be great if she gets stuck. One thing I've noticed a lot in the game is that sometimes characters get stuck in the mid, like they get caught in screenshots during the middle of their dodge frames and stuff, and it doesn't look super appealing. So definitely trying to remedy that a little bit by worrying about every single pose and every animation a lot more going forward, and then maybe later improving those in older animations as well. So her tail is going down, then it curves like that. And then finally, it'll start heading in this direction to get ready for her idle frame. So that's almost working. Just trying to line it up with the next frame in her idle. So it looks like her tail whips right up into her idle frame. Just looking at that here in the playback. There we go, look at that. Look at that sexy little snake tail. I don't I don't mean it's like sexually attractive, I mean it's well animated. Hey, I said you had AFK. No worries. Your boss had a question for me. Hey, man, that's always more important. Oops, lost pixel letter here. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. Looks like we got some shading issues on the tail and the arm here. They're starting to overlap. Want to make sure we deal with those. Hmm. Guess we could deal with that like that. 
Just add a little pixel of shade to the tail where it overlaps the arm. But you can tell that they're separate there. Don't doesn't seem to be the case here. It does seem to be getting a little confusing. There we go. That's a little bit better. Nice tail. Thanks, eyesight. Round hoof is not attractive. It's appealing. Animation terms. It's an appealing tail. Look at look at it just whip around. So good. Usually I hate everything I animate, but every now and again, I appreciate the tails I animate. When I um like overlapping action stuff like with like things that move like this was always a huge challenge or is continues to be a huge challenge for me when I'm animating. So I'm always so happy when I get it right. Or at least get it looking good. So I apologize for the creepiness on stream, guys. High side has melee been well received? Yeah, I mean, I haven't met a single person who's hated melee. Uh, some people didn't necessarily, uh, didn't like, uh, what's the term? Not love it, but like, they weren't crazy about it, but they didn't hate it either. And in fact, most of the people who've played the game for a long time, like long time te players and testers, freaking loved it. I mean, most of them have been asking for it for a long time as well, like I mentioned on stream. Like, people have been asking for melee from the beginning. I've always avoided it. And it was actually your feedback that finally helped me uh, try to get it into the game. But yeah, most people have been playing the game for a long time. Really, really appreciate it. Just as a new mechanic and, you know, a new edge to the game. So yeah, it's been mostly positive for sure. I don't think anyone's not liked it. We'll find out on Steam though. But so far, the Steam community has been super awesome, and everyone who's playing the game there has been really positive about all the new changes, Skyball, etc. Yeah, I say, man, if you didn't have, if Indian size didn't exist, man, then there may never have been melee and Skyhook. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so what I was asking before, before your boss came in, was. Um, if you think the melee attack should have anticipation or not. All right, almost done with Jade's animation here. Just gotta do that back arm right there, which is tough because right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it out first because it doesn't exist in any of the other frames except this one. I mean, except for these two. So I'm wondering how out of place it looks. Because remember, the, the other arm is made dynamically in game, so sometimes it might appear when there's already an arm animated into the, the sprite, in which case it'll look like they have three arms, which actually happens to Jade sometimes. Sometimes if she's ducking in game, her other, her dynamic arm will also stick out, like in frames like this, and frames like this, and then she'll have six arms, or three arms and two legs. Hi sight, that's a tricky question. The anticipation can lead to giving the player a chance to counter. Yeah, totally true. Or to miss. Unexpected counter is good, but a miss is sad, yeah. Uh, there's no wind up on the grappling hooks. Yep. But the wind up for that comes from the distance travel. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, like the grappling hooks, like they don't there's no anticipation, but it does take a while for it to connect before anything happens, so you're pretty much vulnerable during that frame. Um, so yeah, instant melee, it, it's its tough. I mean, I think it probably feels more satisfying to do it instantly. But it'll be interesting to see if it makes makes, makes it a lot more strategic. So you're not just like... Like I know one of my testers when he was playing... Or my old roommate actually, when he was testing the game, he found himself just spamming melee um, every time someone came near him until... So that's one of the reasons I increased the cooldown on melee as well. But maybe the anticipation will make a big difference there. Yeah, you're right, Highside. The only way I'll know is by playtesting it, for sure, yeah. Ah, the mysteries of game development. Almost never know what you're doing. Just looking at the feet. All right, so we're gonna start looking at everything here because this is almost getting near done. Let me know if you guys see anything that I'm not seeing. So we'll start, start frame. 
looking at her head. So this, the ears, we're gonna do a little bit of that. There we go. Ears, the claws come out, shink. Footsteps back, tail wraps down, strikes forward. I think I'm going to shift all of this back a pixel and then shift all this down a pixel. Nope. Shift all of this down a pixel. Yeah, hi, say change a variable. That's not fun. Change a variable. That broke everything. Change a variable. That broke everything, and it's fun. <laughs> that is an excellent, excellent metaphor for game development and how it works. I mean, seriously, like. Just like how fun the grappling hook is, is like one value of how fast it is and stuff, right? No, actually, another bit of high sight, I, I, another bit of high sight, another bit of feedback I addressed from your high sight was I increased the gameplay speed a little bit. I'll probably be increasing a little bit more too soon. So I'm looking at it kind of like her arm flashes here. It goes from this frame to this frame to this frame and almost disappears. I think what needs to happen is this needs to come over there. There we go. Just put Humpty Dumpty back together because we just broke him apart. So right now I'm animating with my mouse. I'm a little tired of leaning in on my Cintiq. Just put some of that back in. this arm back in that's one of the beauties of pixel art is that you can do it just as well with a mouse than you can with a tablet sometimes my brain just gets so tired of using the tablet and then it gets tired of using the mouse too so I'll stop doing that it also just chains up, changes up my wrist as well. So my wrist isn't always locked into the same position. So here we go. Again, working on the arc of this giant claw. So it goes from here to here. That's okay because that's this strike is going to be a little bit of a blur for us. And then it goes down. And then around. In. And then up. So you can see the arc right there of the hand. I think it's looking pretty good. Looking at it in playback, it already looks better. You can follow with your eyes. So yeah, even if you guys are doing pixel art, always keep your arcs and stuff in mind. It makes such a big difference in your work. Especially for big, complex movements like this. Just got some of this highlight back in. There we go, get some of the highlight back into the back foot. foot right now to be honest. Hey hi site, yeah so all the melee boxes, uh, the question is are all the melee boxes the same or in the same area? Uh, right now they are, uh, they will be on um, the beta branch as well. Uh, I do think they're gonna need to be adjusted, we were thinking about that earlier. Um, uh, 
we were talking about that earlier uh if they should be different or not and i think they should be at least so i forgot i think it was was it someone gave the really good feedback that they should be kind of the same surface volume or surface area but just in different locations depending on the attack so like jade's probably needs to be a little bit lower whereas fins is higher because it's on his mouth right now everyone using fins which is generally in this area so it looks accurate but it's not but yeah i'll probably work on that system tonight to adjust the hitboxes Hi, Sai. You've been thinking about this for a long time, and you think you just came up with an interesting idea for your game's controls, but I think you'd hate it. Well, you're probably right that I'll hate it, but yeah, definitely let me know. I'm always open to feedback, no matter what it is. I hope it's not right analog stick to, to aim your hook, though. <laughs> Okay, that ear, this ear right here seems to be going too far forward. So I'm going to pull that back. There we go. So I say uh, it is both a variation on how you may have heard it from others. Sure, yeah, let me know. What do you think? Or let me know your idea. Yeah, the main reason, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk while you're probably still typing. The main reason I haven't uh, done um, right analog stick aiming is because I think it kind of, uh, what's the word? Um, like alienates a large crowd of the game, like the more casual players who will have a lot of trouble. Uh, like it makes, it starts complicating the game, the controls of the game for like the more casual kind of local multiplayer players. I think there's a little bit too much meat here on this ear. Just looking at that. There we go. Yeah, I don't want it to have too much pointiness to it because it's supposed to be foreshadowed, uh, foreshortened. So, uh, hi, Sight. What if you flick the stick in the direction you want to shoot, aim in the direction you want to aim, and then you've got it aimed up and release it? On the release, it shoots the hook. Um, yeah, that's actually a really cool idea. Actually, um, that is how it used to control uh, early on, uh, back when it was on Steam Greenlight. So it would, the controls were um, you could you got it aimed up, yeah, so you would like aim and then you could release your hook uh, with the button and then you would press it again to like bring your hook back and it gave you like a lot more control so you could actually like grapple around and like pull yourself up and down and stuff like that. But I think you're absolutely right that it would um, it would make it a lot more engaging and a lot more like mechanically interesting. Um, but yeah, I decided to stick, I decided to go for this like super simple, just like press a button and it shoots out to kind of make it a little bit more approachable, make the control schemes a little bit more approachable. But I think you are you are absolutely right that it would be a much more like interesting control scheme. All right, guys, I think we might be done. Look at this again. I don't know if you guys see something I'm not seeing. Oh, boom! Right there, her belt is missing. So yeah, I think we're just about there. Just looking at it in playback. Save this file so I don't lose it. Yeah, I say you're totally right. Balancing for players is a tricky thing. Um, you admire sticking to keeping it mechanically simple. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean. To be honest, it, it super it excites me a lot to try to you know maybe if Skyhook if people really enjoy it if it you know is a decently successful game, you know a Skyhook two maybe that has a little bit more complicated control schemes would be super awesome. Aim your hook with one, you know, aim your melee with another, like retract and pull yourself like you know more like the Arkham grappling hook. That would be cool. 
So hey, I mean, if we, if we can just get this game to be a success, guys, then uh, who knows what we could develop. To Big challenge first is getting people to even know the game exists. So, okay, just looking at the shading on the toes here. I think I kind of screwed it up actually. All right, I'm gonna undo what I just did. Okay, so I see this is getting messed up. I'm just going to copy this toe over here. Let's uh, get back down because this is all sensitive, contact sensitive to this view. Let's put that toe in there. And straighten it out. Step one before step two, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, Isaac. Let's see, so this leg gets super dark here, which is not what we want. There we go, brighten that up a little bit. Looking at the playback, seeing if the lighting is generally accurate across the character on all the frames. It's pretty crazy. I can't believe Jade is clawing right now. the sleepy eyes were better? I'm not sure. Let's undo that, look at it again. Yeah, no, I think it's better without it. Full on Wolverine, that's right. Three claws. Yeah, and still, once again, I've I said it a few times on stream already, but <clears throat> we owed it to Grotum for, um, Suggesting giant claws on Jade for her melee attack. All right, let's jump in. Let's see this in game. Come on, Jade, bring it on, bring it on, Jade, because I'm Jade. Oh, look at that slash, guys! We just made that on stream today in about what is what has it would have been an hour and forty seven sorry two hours and forty seven minutes. Pixel art still takes a long time, even though people seem to think it's really easy and really lazy. If you want to make it look good, then got to take your time. Clawed in the face. Now what's cool is the melee attacks work as an extra jump now. So you have your jump, so you can jump, you can dodge, and you can melee attack to really lunge yourself forward. Yep, slashes knock back hooks, slashes knock back each other. Um, so if someone tries to hook you, you could totally slash them away. You could slash the hook away and it'll go back. Yep, yep, just like a front end shield effect. Let's do a quick rematch. Yeah, so the slashes are pretty much just using the sword system that I made like two weeks ago. Um, we refactored that a little bit, I think on stream. I can't remember if it did on stream or not. But um, yeah, it's using the same sword system, so swords they, re they um, deflected hooks. And so it's using a, like an improved version of that. Claw, claw, hook. Oops. What's in here? We're all the same, who am I? Oh, we were already all the same. Oh, and the other cool thing is, I'm pretty sure you can 
clash, I mean, you can, if you slash hooks that are already on the ground, so say somebody is hanging somewhere, or if they're like this, they're hanging like this, you should be able to claw that hook. Actually, we're going to have to test that out. Uh, it's going to be really hard to do because you have to hold down the hook button. But let's do this. Let's turn off bots. And we'll test this with the keyboard. So this is the keyboard. I'm going to bring them over here. I'm going to walk over there as well. So hook is R. So if I, oh, killed myself. Gosh. So I have to somehow hold these two buttons down. Okay, I could just do that. Cool. Now I'm holding down R with one hand, guys, and I'm using my gamepad with my other hand to run over here. So let's test this. Okay, so the collider is too high right now. So it's not going to work. We need it to be somewhere higher. I just want to test if the system is working. Oh, here's what we can do, actually. We will go into player one. Oh, God. R, 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 because I'm holding down R. All right, we'll go into player one. Sorry. We'll just lower the um, uh, player container. So even though like, the system is coded in, we always want to test it out to make sure it's actually working in-game. So player sprite, what we're going to do, we're going to hack this. We're going to look at the kill box here. So you guys can see it's pretty high, so it would never hit the hook on the ground. Um, so we're going to edit this trigger. We're going to make it like that. Okay. Let's try this out again. So I'm going to bring both players over here. Killed myself again by accident. Just going to leave that computer hanging there. I'll watch walk over there casually and try to cut his hook. Boom! Your hook got cut. Uh, clawed on the wall. So Heisei, despite how the animation may look, if you're attacking someone in front of you, you're going to aim up or down to hit them. Uh, you're going to aim up or down to hit them. Yeah, that's true. Right, right, right. So the weird thing was that the hook shouldn't have re... There we go. Just do this. So what I wanted to happen was that she falls off. The computer falls off. So let's see what happened there. The hook looked like, looked like the hook reattached, which we don't want. Uh. So the hook reattached there, which is not what we want. Um, so the hook controller, actually, it has a cancel method, which won't reattack. Is forced returning is true. It shouldn't reattach if it's forced returning, which is really interesting. I wonder why it's doing that. Is force returning as false? Hmm. Interesting. Hi, Sight. You're noticing the lunge is actually causing you to miss in some cases by moving through an enemy before the kill boss activates. Huh. Let me see. What we'll do is we'll jump into slow motion. And let's grab a player. Actually, we need to be in the scene view. Player one, player one, oh, that's an asset, oh. player one, what's going on here? There we go. So yeah, I appreciate you noticing that, hindsight, let's, let's frame through it. So here's the player, okay, there's my dodge, I'm going to face this way, I'm going to turn gizmos down. Uh, so let's see if I... Let's see. 
So as soon as you attack, so it anticipates for a frame, for three frames rather, and then pushes forward, the trigger shows, ah, uh, the overlap is here, which is still wrong, and then he starts heading forward. So it looks like the trigger does appear. What might be happening is that the trigger isn't actually firing. Um, that might be what's going on. Let's do a little slow-mo test of the game. All right, so I'm going to get closer this time. Wait for the invincibility to end. Okay, so I'm like here. Okay, let's just try to go all the way on top. So do you mean um, if you're like really close to... Well, actually, we're kind of cheating because we're in slow-mo, so the physics is going to fire properly, which is annoying. Let's try from here. Okay. So what might need to happen is I need to adjust this overlap circle. So here's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is... I can't remove this, I don't think. Okay. I'm going to just make this a box collider. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to make it just this area on the player. Oh gosh. So I'm going to make the kill box a box. From halfway to forward. Pretty much if you're in that entire area of the player, that's what it will kill you. I'm going to start with that. The reason I'm doing it is because then we can just use our own old physics check. Ron, who you're out of here. You got two hours to sleep now? Aw, oh, dude, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. Have a great time in France. Have a safe trip. Uh, enjoy the holidays. Enjoy everything. Hope you get that th the thing you wanted for Christmas. Um, thanks so much for hanging out, supporting it. This, and don't forget, um, everybody hanging out in chat, Ron Hood does have a giveaway for Skyhook Steam Keys. So definitely check that out. It ends in two days. Ron Hood, see you next year, man. See you after the New Year's. Thanks, man. I'll um, get all this stuff up on beta so you can check it out when you get back from your holidays. Enjoy! Alright, so now that we got the overlap, we're going to go into the sword trigger. Sword trigger. Let me try to spell properly. Alrighty, righty, righty, righty. So we got our sword trigger and we're doing an overlap here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a rect um, collider, we're going to call it collider rect. We're going to do is we're going to, now that the hitbox is a box collider, we're going to create a rect out of the box collider. So we're going to do it here. We're not going to use the overlap locator anymore. So the collider rect equals box collider to rect and we're going to do a collider and we're just going to we're just going to get component right now i know that's pure evil but we're just doing it to make sure this works okay so we have our rect and we're going to do hits equals physics 2d dot overlap area all and our area is going to be from the collider rect min to the collider rect max. Basically our collider rectangle is, you know, a rectangle. So it's going to be the box. Ron Hu, um, thanks for the giveaway link. Awesome. Everybody please check that out. Itoxi, why is Gecko Component pure evil? Great question. So uh, a lot of times what people do when they're working in Unity is they will get component like this. Uh, but this is happening in a method, check overlap, which is happening every single frame in update. So every single frame you're getting this component, which is uh, an extra overhead for no reason whatsoever in this script. Uh, now you won't really notice it, especially when it's happening on one or two com uh, one or two uh, classes. Um, uh, no worry about being AFK uh, high side, that's totally cool. Um, so yeah, when you get component in one or two classes and update, not as much of a big deal if you're 
uh, if your players have some RAM, they won't really notice it. But once that starts duplicating, say we start having four sword triggers, twelve, which we which we do, twelve sword triggers when we have monsters, twenty sword triggers if there's like twenty monsters and minions and bosses, right? We're now get componing, get com getting the component twelve times um, on every single frame, sixty times per second for all these things. Um, so what you should be doing is caching your components, and you might already know that Itoxie. Um So you should like what we're doing here with Collider. So I have my Collider 2D. Uh, so and I'll just do this right now. So we'll just do private box collider 2D, and we'll call that box collider. And so here in start or in awake, sorry, I'm going to do get component box collider 2D. I'm going to get rid of the old collider stuff. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just rename this to be Collider. There, uh, there we go. So I'm going to use only a box Collider for this. And now since you are get componenting, getting the component on Awake, you want to make sure the script requires this component, because basically the script doesn't work without this component, right? So the top I'm going to do require component type of box, box Collider 2D. That means you can't add this class to any object unless it has a box Collider 2D. So if it doesn't have one, Unity will automatically add one. If you do get component at start, yeah, totally okay to get, do get component at start. Uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, it's just much better to catch your get components. Um, yeah, sorry for the scare. Hopefully, so you probably already knew all this stuff, but hopefully anybody else hanging out in chat can learn something from that. Um, so we'll do, this is just collider. So hits equals collider rect, collider max. Uh, layer mask, so we'll just do the same layer mask here. Okay. It should work. Get rid of that. Hi, say you're learning. <laughs> I'm glad. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. So this is for hooks only. So if it hits. So we want to draw a rect here, draw wire cube. Parameters for that is the center. So we'll do collider rect dot center and collider rect collider rect dot size. All right, all right, all right, all that stuff. So let's take a look at that in game. So now all their kill boxes are actual hit boxes, or are like boxes, literally boxes. Unmaximize hit play. Search for player one here. Areas. We're going to sword attack. There's the hit box. A little bit too big, but we can see that our rect is working just properly. So that red rect. So what that should do, uh, high sight, is detect physics changes on update as a, or detect collisions on update as opposed to detecting. Why did I do this for collisions? Because this is a collision. Detect physics collisions on update rather than fixed update. So hopefully it'll uh, it'll avoid those issues like that I think you were seeing of us dashing through the player. Um, that should solve it. I mean, generally, since the hitbox is going to be in front of the player. If they um, if they are attacking somebody who's on this side of them, then it won't kill them. So hopefully that works out properly in game. We're gonna lower these a little bit. <clears throat> so yeah, we got melee attacks for Jade, guys. It is a thing. Let's test it out. We're gonna do this again, then we're gonna jump into a test match. Boom! And the power on this cat! The screen shake. Ugh, she's invincible. Here we go, one last kill. Slice! Awesome, feels good. Let's jump into the main menu, let's do a quick test match. It does feel juicy, high sight. Absolutely right. Can't wait for you to try it out when you get a chance. Let's go into the game controller. Well, so many scripts in this game, guys. Let's close all this stuff. 
disable debug, jump into a test match. Thanks so much, HiSight. Appreciate it. Again, owe it to you for the suggestions, for the feedback, for the honesty, for the criticism. If you guys, anybody in chat working on an indie game, don't be afraid. Submit it to Indie Insights, HiSight's show, where he just rips your game apart, him and everybody else in chat on stream, and just give they give great and honest feedback. Uh, excellent, excellent show. Let's see, I'm going to choose Jade, of course. I'm going to set the computer to be Jade and Finn. So we could see that going on. Uh, crap, actually I'm going to make the computer Anara because Jade doesn't have her skins yet. Actually, we should just do that, right? Let's do that. Let me show you guys the little tool I put together. So I'm going to save this, export the sprite in Unity. I made myself a little skin generator here. So go over to skin generator. If I set this to Jade, so you guys can see all of Jade's skins. If you look at her skins here, they're actually missing. If you see that right there, they're missing the slice animations. It's only in this skin that she has her slice. Oh, I just realized her, okay, that's black and green, yeah. So this is the only one that has the slice animations. So basically what I do is I run this script, generate skins, and it's gonna generate all the different colors for Jade. Thanks for the link, HiSight. Appreciate it, everybody. Definitely check that out. Um, he's really quite gentle. Yeah, I'm sorry if, I, if it sounded harsh. Uh, I appreciate people ripping games apart, so that to me is a positive thing. If you're working on a game, you definitely need someone to rip it apart, because otherwise you won't learn anything. So yeah, he is pretty gentle. He's very honest, very uh, kind. Uh, he's got a warm heart. He is. He likes long walks on the beach and candlelight dinners. Uh, <laughs> Let's jump over to the main menu now. We've got all of our jades in there. So let's see. Versus. So boom, we got a fin. We got two fins. I'm gonna drop one in as a jade. I'm gonna be a jade. I'm gonna be pink jade, one of the new skins. Slice, 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 slice. So these are the two characters that have the slice attack. We got fin, we got two jades. Actually, screw it, let's turn on another fin. Let's turn you into a computer, make you a fin. Oops, wrong one. Make you a fin, make me a jade. Let's do this. Let's frickin' skyball it up. Let's make it five points to win. Red team rules. Let's do, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, frost guard. He's a, <laughs> I say he's a generous lover. That's right, guys. Here we go. Red team rules. Melee attacks. So here's a really exciting thing about the melee, guys. Uh, since Skyball is also such a pretty big hit in the game. Ugh, couldn't see the goal. Some more camera bugs to work out. What I'm excited to do is now that we have melee, when you're holding the Skyball, you can't... Oh, did you see that? I just meleeed him while he was throwing the ball. That was awesome. That was like a inter pass interference. Itoxy, yep, that's right. So I'm you. I have different sprite sheets for different characters. Um, I'm not the reason that the reason for that is I'm not generating the palette swaps in engine. So all the ways that I, I found to do palette swaps uh, when I researched it online, uh, basically every time you do it, a it's another draw call. But I couldn't do it, so I could only do it when the game was starting. But I couldn't do it at runtime without it being a lot of overhead. Because basically when you do palette swaps. The game needs to take this texture, so say Jade's main texture, and then replace every pixel with a separate, with a different color. And there, the sprite sheets are 512 by 512. So even on my computer, which has 24 gigs of RAM, two gigs of graphic memory, uh, GTX, I forgot what, a GTX 600, 660 or something. Um, even with all of that, it still took like 11 seconds to generate the sprite sheet at runtime, and so. In the main menu, when the characters are changing what skin they choose, they're literally hot swapping their skin color in front of you. And so they can just keep doing that. And every time you did that, it would have to generate, regenerate the sprite sheet for the first time. And it would still cache the sprite sheet, but for that first generation, it would take a long time. And if I want to generate that before the game's loading, then it's going to increase load time, etc. So the way I'm doing it right now is I generate all the textures beforehand. And I could be doing this wrong, so please tell me if you have a better idea. Um, so I generate all the textures beforehand in Unity's editor, and then those get swapped out, which is much easier to do uh, in the game. 
So they're all using the same animator and the same colliders and all that stuff. 11 seconds, yeah, it was nuts. I actually took a Linda course to learn how to do pallet swapping, which was actually really, really helpful. It was actually made by a guy I used to know, Jesse Freeman, who is a, another indie dev from New York City. Something sounds unoptimized. Yeah, well, the un the main place it was unoptimized was that it wasn't ca it, you know you need to ta cache detectors, which it could do that, but after the first time it would need to um, run through the sprites. Maybe there's some way to cache how the sprites get replaced. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's definitely some ways to optimize it. I mean, you're definitely right that it doesn't have to be 11 seconds. There's probably some faster ways, but uh, what I appreciate about doing it in the editor is that the runtime becomes zero, and so the player never has to wait for any loading for the textures. Skyball's looking good, thanks man. I don't think you got to try that out on stream, right? It might have been before Skyball came out. Or sorry, when you were doing Indie Insights, I mean. Ah, oh, missed it. Goal. So yeah, the camera definitely needs some more leeway. Let's see, what's the, uh, let's go to the render camera. How far is two? Two is like there. How far is three? So maybe it should be 2.5 for this stage. Let's go to Viking stage. So each stage has a definition for how wide the camera can go. So I'm going to make it 2.5 for the Viking stages. Uh, let's do one more test match, guys. Yep, you're right, Highside. I think actually I think Skyball came out like the, right the day after Indie Insights or something. So sorry for the bad timing. To make all these guys computers. We got a Finn, we got a Jade. This is awesome. Everybody's got their melee attack, or these two characters have their melee attack. Let's jump into some capture the swag. Haven't played that in a little while. I'm gonna decrease the score. Make it 150. Let's go over to the tombs of Ra. There's the swag. So you can melee when you have the swag. I'm curious to see how to balance that out. Maybe it's good because it's your only form of defense. Well, actually, you can hook when you have the swag too, right? So never mind. Oh man, it's so crazy looking at Jade trying to slash Finn while Finn tries to bite Jade. That's pretty surreal for me having worked in this game for two years. And never even seeing that. It's so insane. Got the swag. So in this game mode, if you guys haven't seen it before, this is Capture the Swag. There's a bag of swag. Whoever holds on to it for the a lot of time wins. And you get one point for every half second you have the bag or something. Thanks, high side. Appreciate it. Itoxi, is it possible to combine two sprites in one runtime? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Like take two textures and overlap them onto each other? Because I mean, if you want to do that, then what you can probably just do is literally lay them on top of each other. So like even the players, there's one sprite for their body, one sprite for their arm, one sprite for their hook, and it's all just laid on top of each other. So I wonder, does adding melee mean that Skyhook is technically a brawler now? Can it be can it be categorized as a brawler? I'm not really sure. What exactly does a brawler mean? Because you can melee, you can dodge. So I'm not sure about the cooldown after melee attacks. It's pretty long. You can put a hat on the head. Yeah, no, totally. So I'll show you guys. I'll show you that right now, Toxy. Uh, I mean, I. Oh snap. Oh yeah, no reference, guys. Always do your null checks, boys and girls. Sorry, there's a Toxy. Just a second. Take care of this null. These null checks, real quick. No reference sections are no good. You never, ever, 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 never, ever, never want them in your game. So 
So if trail, if trail, if trail. All right, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so you can totally overlay sprites on top of each other. Um, the cooldown high sight is currently, let's see, I think it's called on melee. I think it's really, yeah, it's 0.7 seconds. It's a little bit more than half a second. I had on half a second and one of the testers felt like he was able to spam it too much. And I put it on one second, that was obviously way too crazy. So I put it on 0.7 seconds, which still seems like a little long. I could take it down to 0.6. Arbitrary values for game dev. Um, so yeah, Toxie, I can totally just add hats to people if I wanted to. The difference is, so I'm because I'm an animator, uh, I'm really anal about how things look when they're animated. So check this out. We're going to go into the test scene. We'll go into the player sprite. We're going to add a baby sprite in here. Add a sprite renderer. Let's Google like pixels. Does anyone have a hat they want me to throw onto the characters? Otherwise, I'm just going to Google pixel art hat. Oh, there's a nice little top hat. Let's copy that. I'm just going to go into the treasure sprite here and add that in. Uh, high side, the cooldown starts at the beginning of the animation. Yeah, so it's from the moment that you press uh, the melee button, that's when the cooldown starts because you can't move at all after you press the button. Pirate hat? Uh, <laughs> yeah, high sight. Always with the obvious thing that I did not see. <laughs> all right, let's do that. Pirate hat pixel art. Oh my god, Luffy's hat. Let's do it. Oh, let's totally put Luffy's hat into the game. All right, so we're gonna do this super quick. I'm gonna show you guys what it would look like if there was hats in the game. Kind of show myself too, because why not, right? Uh, so some red, and then some more yellow. We're never afraid of anything here on stream, guys, so don't ever be afraid to ask. We will do it, we'll do it live. I lost my Photoshop layers here. Just gonna put all this. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, don't save. I am not trying to be full screen. I'm trying to put this in here. We don't need these cats scratching anymore. Let's jump in here again. So it's gonna be in the right layer. All right, guys. Let's delete that. Put this in here. So I'm gonna put that over here. This is the sh this is a sprite sheet I use for the treasures, cannons, treasure chests. Um, high sight so much yes right now. <laughs> uh, these are the variants or the special options. These are monsters from some other game that I'm using for placeholders. These are icons I use for the editor. Um, this is just a massive sprite sheet of everything I need. Here's the goal. These are the, the goals for sky goals. They have some of them have stands. This is just kind of my miscellaneous sprite sheet for everything. These are masks. There used to be mask power ups which I actually removed. Actually, high sight you've probably seen them before too. There were mass power-ups in the game. Um, do I follow the manga? No, I haven't read um, One Piece in years. I used to read a lot of manga. Uh, I think I mentioned this on stream before. My dream when I was younger, before I started making games, was to be a mangaka. And so I used to draw a lot of manga and read a lot of manga. But no, I haven't read One Piece in a very, very long time. But I think it's still going, right? Which is really insane. I can't even fathom how it's possibly still going. So let's put a little bit of shadow here. So there's a Luffy hat, mirror it. Make it about the right shape. I think that's about right. Crazy things happening these days. They just ended a two year arc. One Piece is number one manga in Japan right now. It's been number one manga forever. That's crazy. Is like, is it, he's got to have like a giant team by now. There's no way he's just making it all by himself still, right? I forgot his name. Oh, is it Oba? I forgot the name of the, uh, the manga ka behind One Piece. He has a little Luffy hat. I'm going to merge that in. Just gonna put it over here next to all this other miscellaneous crap. Um, 
So here it is, edit that sprite. It's mostly just him. Oda Sensei barely sleeps, but dude, he's been barely sleeping for like 20 years. How could he? And he still wants to, and he probably still has more ideas that he wants to put in. There's so much respect to that guy, Oda Sensei. All right, there's a hat, guys. Itoxi asked us about hats. We're gonna freaking put a hat in the game and see what it looks like. Because I've always wondered myself too. So, the, the, what I was saying before Itoxi, that I didn't get to finish. My main problem is that the characters animate a lot, right? So most retro games, or like really, really retro games, the head always stays still in every animation. It's always in the same position. It's always at the same height, and the body animates around it. And I'm not a really big fan of that, especially with the art style I'm going for for Skyhook. So the Skyhook characters, their heads bob up and down. They look up. Their heads rotate in different frames. So the big challenge to adding hats to the game is I can't just stick like you know stick the hat statically onto their heads because then it won't be following their animations and it won't be rotating with the sprites, which I couldn't deal with that. I would have to do it. So the only way I can add hats to the game is if I'm animating all the hats at least with like four or five different frames. So it's like rotated, down, uh, curved, etc. And I'm making sure all the players always use the same kind of layout so that they're always rotating on the same frames. They're rotating their heads on the same frames so that the hats are always aligned. It's not something I definitely haven't been, have been against. I would love to do it. It's technically out of scope, but screw it. We're on stream, and I love you guys, and you guys asked to see what this is like, so yeah, let's get it done. So let's put this on the player's layer. I'll put it on layer 99. Let's see what the size of that is. It's kind of small right now, but it's going to put it on Finn's head like that. I'm going to stick it in the player sprite, apply changes, I'm going to make the test character Jade, check, <laughs> check it out guys, let's lower it a little bit for Jade, uh, hat, let's put it like there. Almost there. Gonna move it back a little bit. And you guys can already see it's obviously not matching her animations. Lol indeed. But yeah, Toxie, so you can see instead of combining the two sprites, I can just have them stand on top of each other. And so now it looks like she's wearing her hat as long as she's not animating. And so here's the biggest challenge with Jade, right? When she runs, she runs on all fours. So while most of the characters stay standing upright, she actually leans her entire head forward and rotates it down. Meaning if she was wearing a hat during her run frame, it would need to be specifically animated for Jade's running. Or I guess a locator could be moved with their head, but it wouldn't look right. Yeah, hat anchor, yeah, that's what I was just I was, that's that's a good way to phrase it. So like an anchor transform that follows their heads around and is animated with them and moves around with it. So yeah, Toxie, so that, yeah, that's what we're talking about. So uh, one way to be would be to, as Highside said, have an anchor. So if your character's heads don't rotate a lot, then you can just have the hat anchored to that position and it'll move up and down with their idle frames. It'll move with their duck frames. Um, but if your characters rotate their heads a lot, then you'll have to have the anchor on top of definitions for the anchor. So for example, when I look up, it'll tell the hat rotate up. When I duck, it'll tell the hat rotate down. And so the hat will follow the anchor and will also animate itself. So the hat will have like a few frames of animation. So it's absolutely possible. Uh, it's going to be an interesting amount of work. But yeah, totally, totally possible. And then we can just make hats. The game is just be all about hats. So here it is guys, Jade with a Luffy hat. Let's see what the other characters look like with Luffy hat on. Let's switch over to Runa, who, here's another interesting challenge, right? Runa has a helmet on with Viking horns, so that will probably have to be turned into a hat, because otherwise her Viking horns will stick out of anything she wears, like this. Which is kind of funny, actually. Hat DLC and sell millions. That's true, High Sight, that's true. Hey, if, the game, if the game's doing decently well on Steam, I wouldn't be against it. Um, here's Runa with Luffy head, and she honestly looks kind of badass. 
with a little horn sticking out of her luffy hat. Oh my god, let's look at Grimlock with the luffy hat on. Because he was already wearing a hat, so again, his hat would have to be separated out as a separate uh, separate hat system. Nope, can't even see his eyes. That's hilarious. And then finally, let's look at Anara. Ah, Runa headbutts people with her with her Viking helmet. Not, oh, look at Anara. She looks the best with the hat on. Cause she has a rounded head. But yeah, Toxie, I hope that answers your question. Let me know what you if that helped at all. But check it out, guys. This is what we made on stream today. Um, a melee attack for Jade scratches the crap out of people. It is awesome. It's so good in game. I am going to publish that. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this hat first. Uh, I'm going to publish this onto Steam right now. Uh, build and publish. So on Steam, you'll be able to play as Finn, chomping people, as Jade, scratching people's eyes out. You'll be able to play as Grimlock, the newest character who's not even out on Steam yet, but he's going to be on this private beta for you guys hanging out on Twitch. Um, high sight, that was a joke, but hey, I, I will prototype everything, man. You know me. Um, you talk to you, changing pixel pivot at runtime. Yeah, so what you would do is just create a transform. I usually call it a locator and then just have a script on the hat that's, that references the transform is always snapping its position to the to that to that object. That's actually how the player's arms work, the way the hook that the arm that they use to shoot their hook. There's a shoulder transform, which I can show you as soon as it's done building here. Uh, each player has a shoulder locator and the script on the arm is actually always finding the position of the shoulder locator and, and setting its own position to that. So I can show you what that looks like real quick once I build out the steam. This music is awesome. Here we go. All right. Let me show you uh, Itoxy. So I'm going to pull up the player here. So player container actually is in the player sprite. So no, that's not it. I think that's a redundant arm. So you can look at the players um, are all built up using this player container system. So here's the player and the player has an arm. So you can see all the players look like this. There's their arm and the arm has a locator which is here. There we go. So here's the arm locator. Let me turn on my gizmos so you can see that. There we go. So there's the arm locator. So this arm locator is always located right here on the player. And this arm has a script called player arm animator. And what it does is every frame, it sets its position here to transform that parent dot position equals my players dot arm locators dot position. So the player knows where its arm locator is, and so the arm animator finds that arm locator and just sets its position to be the same. So it's always following the player's shoulder locator. So you kind of do the hat the same way. The hat would have a script that's saying, where is the hat pivot? Follow that transform. And that would be one of the easier ways to do it, at least in Unity, because you have these locators and transforms you can use. You can always, of course, hard set the values in code yourself as well. Sweet. All right, guys. Let's see what we got here. I got this super cool new Steam Pro. Let's see if this works. Hold on, guys. Oh, no, nothing's happening. Hold on. Order. Move to top. Oh, it's not doing anything. Let's see. But if the shoulder moves, the arm locator should, arm, arm locator should move too. Yeah, exactly, Toxy. So right now the character's shoulders never move. They're always, they're, well, not never, but they're generally always in the same place to aim from. There are some places like when they're ducking that it does move, and I haven't addressed that yet. But yeah, what you would then need is a separate animator system to move that locator up and down. Or in code, you could just say, if ducking, move the arm locator down a few pixels. If standing, move the arm locator up. And so the arm locator would move independently, and then the other arm would follow that. So let's see, did I get this working? Ah, sweet. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best. Uh, this has been... Oh, no. The time is wrong. Oh, no. It says 10 a.m. That's okay. Yeah, that sketch is actually from last last week's stream. And it was a suggestion here on Twitch to draw Jade chasing a cat, chasing being chased by a dog. You guys remember. It was most of your faults. <laughs> all the crazy ideas. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the stream, if you enjoy Skyhook, if you enjoy watching me work, please don't forget to follow. I'll be streaming more all the time. Thanks so much, Highsight. 
Uh, thanks for hanging out. Itoxy, everybody else for hanging out. Uh, I don't know who else is still left in the chat, but Shed Knight, uh, Futch, as always, Grodum, thank you guys so much for all your advice. Theodore, uh, Ron Hu, who's gone now, thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. You make this worth it. Uh, so I'll be streaming Skype development all the time. I'm here working on the game. Uh, so I'm going to head out now. Uh, the time is wrong on the thing over here. I'll be streaming over here, over here, over here. I'll be streaming Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll update that for next time. Uh, so I'll be here. Uh, so please come back again, guys. Please follow if you enjoyed the channel. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.